Here we are. It's Saturday, September 9th, right? 8th. September 8th. We're live at Center Street Day. And we're going to be covering the kart races this morning. What I assume oh. To start, I'd like to take you out to Center Street here between uh, Bremen and Wheel. And uh, this is where the kart races happen. It's one block length that they race. The carts are already out here. We have uh, quite some special vehicles out here. And what we're going to try and do is talk with some of the contestants, some of the entrants, and ask them how they feel about the race today. Hi, I'm with uh, the River West Radio, and we're, we're broadcasting, we're covering the uh, races today. And I just wanted to ask uh, what got you into the race, how you feel about it, and what you think about your machine here. Long story. Okay. Okay, three years ago, we entered the Stonefly, and we won. Like, it was the first time any of us had done the race, and we won. The next year, we came back to defend our champion, and we got beat by Stella the Brave, this 12-year-old girl who was pushing her 4-year-old brother in a burly bicycle trailer. We were ashamed, and it took us years to recover, and now we're back to take another stab at the title. That's great. You have a beautiful ship here, a beautiful ship. So did all of you participate in building this? Yes. Yes, actually, this right here, I made it. With my eyes closed. <laughs> eyes closed. All of us, our eyes were closed. Blindfolded. Even when we went, our eyes were closed. <laughs> and today we're going to win with the eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So the spirit is the spirit is in the machine. Okay. Are you guys are you guys actually the first to race? Will you be the first? We don't know who's going to be first at all. That's up to Sparky, and he probably won't know until he goes up to call people to the start line. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And and so you're the Groundwork Milwaukee Green Team. Okay. Okay. Well, we're rooting for you. I mean, I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I do. All right. Good luck, you guys. All right. That that is a beautiful boat. It's basically a a purple kayak on wheels with handlebars for propulsion. Okay. Let's see if we can find another one of these machines. Let's see. Hi. I'm with River West Radio, and we're broadcasting, we're covering the races, and I just wanted to talk to uh, people that were in the race, entrance, if you were available for a quick interview just to tell us a little bit about your cart. Oh, here's the cart. Oh. Do you have a moment to tell us about your cart? This is River West Radio. Okay. Um, well, we've been racing the same cart for a few years. We spent a lot of time working on it, but it seems like something breaks on it every year, so we'll find out what will break this year. Oh, so this is the same cart that you've been racing yeah. for the... Okay. Your name is? Uh, Sparky. Sparky. Okay. Okay. So, I okay. Sure. You have been here since the beginning, I imagine. Yeah. I, well, there was one race that happened before I was involved, but then uh, it's, this race has been gone since, I think, 92. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it skips a year. Sometimes it's in November. Now that we have Center Street days, it's always at Center Street days. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about last year's winner? Is she back this year? Um, I don't think so. I don't okay. think she is. Uh, <laughs> well, I think we've got some strong competition. We actually have some runners from Africa here who I think are going to toast everybody. The Milwaukee Green Team, the Groundworks Team? Yeah. Yeah, I just interviewed them. They do look <laughs> really good. I think bad. they're going to toast them. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a, that's a beautiful machine. That's a beautiful machine. So I hope I hope it stays together for you this year. Well, the front the front axle is held on with a lazy Susan swivel ball bearing set. <laughs> wow, that sounds very exciting. <laughs> we lose a few bearings every year. <laughs> okay, well, best of luck to you. Thank, Thank you, Sparky. You. Thanks a lot. You're oh, just one thing. You're sort of in charge of uh, the race and who pretty much. First. Well, we let the we let the organizer Frank do that. He, he, okay. he, he puts all that together. We just help set up the course and do a little organizing. One person calls me every year to ask the rules, and we just say, the rules are there has to be someone riding in the cart. Okay. So there has to be someone riding in the cart. That's it. You can have as many people as you want pushing. Yeah, and it has to be safe. If something is 
sharp or dangerous. We have a lot of kids here. We don't yeah. want anybody getting hurt. Right, right. But it's, those are the only two rules. Right, and all the years that you've been doing this, it's been a very safe event. Well, <laughs> okay. just people I'm say there's scrapes, and, okay. scrapes and bruises and, uh, hopes and you know, carts are falling yeah. apart and careened into the crowd and people get hurt. <laughs> No one's, got, no one's ever had to go to the hospital. It's still fun. It's still it's fun. fun. It's still there. Okay, great. Great. Well, I'm going to move on. Right, thank you. Again. Thanks. Yeah. Hello. Okay, here's some innocent bystanders. <laughs> and they were warned yesterday they might get interviewed. So <laughs> they had a chance to run. <laughs> Have you, so I'll, okay, all, all I want to, I'll keep it short, I'll keep it quick. This is River West Radio, right? And we're uh, examining the contestants. And I just want to know if you had a favorite in the race. Um, Right now, I think my um, favorite is the green team. The green team? Wow, there's a lot of people rooting for the green team today. Because yeah. It's kids. Who are pushing it, and I, I always root for the kids. And it's fun to root for the winner, because boy, do they look fast. Yep, they, look <laughs> <laughs> they look very fast. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, we'll keep moving. We'll keep moving now. Let's explore some of the other, the other carts. Hi. Wow, this is quite. This is quite, it's a, it's a noodle, it's a cup of noodles, it's a spaghetti. It's spaghetti on wheels, that's what we are looking at. Yeah. Hi, I'm with River West Radio, and we're broadcasting, kind of covering the races today. Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm, this, okay, this is Central Cafe's in, in, entrance into the race, yeah. and, and I'll let you explain it just a little bit. All right, so uh, we're past the place on Center Street, mm-hmm. and we're doing essentially like spaghetti and meatballs kind of, and we've got four shops. Five chefs, and then we've got <laughs> four or five chefs. And there's already too many cooks in the kitchen. Too many cooks in the kitchen. And then we have a um, bowl of noodles. Oh, yeah. And uh, one big meatball in there. It looks really chewy. It, it's, it, it's quite, it, it is as chewy as chewy can be. <laughs> okay, and how, what is your prognosis for the race? How do you feel going into the race? I feel that we'll win because Central only has winners. And they're well fed. And they're well fed. Well fed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We'll we'll do it. We'll do it well. <laughs> that is important. Yeah. Yeah. And so you and hopefully you won't lose any meatballs. On no. The hopefully we won't. <laughs> there is, no. There will be no meatballs rolling away. Okay. Well, it's a it's a beautiful cart. Thank you. Beautiful cart. Thank you. And uh, I just oh there is also a toilet bowl over there. Yeah, there is. Well, I wonder how that's going to do today. You should go check that. Yeah. Out. <laughs> hopefully it stays clean, right? <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> did, they, did they bring toilet paper with that? Let's look yeah. so. If not, we've got them at the restaurant. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna, I am gonna. think I'm going to head over to the toilet bowl. Do it. Okay. All right, we're going to head over to the to- toilet bowl, unless unless we get distracted here. There are some amazing carts. Wow. This looks dangerous. I mean, I mean, like, you wouldn't want to be in front of it. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Wow, this is a tin foil dream machine, and we have a youngster riding in it. So we'll come back to this one in a second. Let's get over to the toilet bowl. Hi, I'm with River West Radio, and I'm just uh, interviewing some of the contestants, entrants, and uh, I, I had I had to come over here and make sure you had your toilet paper. So, <laughs> when, do you have that glued? Is that oh, it is glued? Okay. And, it's flush with success. Yeah. Yes. That <laughs> that is your motto. Yeah. <laughs> well. Well, is there any is there anything else you'd like to add about the conception of this vehicle or the radio? Well, it's got lightning bolts on it. You know, we can go fast. Looks good. Oh yeah, that helps. Uh, uh, when the close, uh, 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 it, wow, yeah, the Twix bars. Yeah. <laughs> it's loaded with Twix bars for energy, yeah. and. This is issue 49 of Scary Monsters magazine. Right, so reading material. You have to have reading material on the can. <laughs> have you read that article, then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, who is the rider here? Who will be riding? I will be riding. You're the pilot. Now, do you ride with the seat open or closed? It'll be open. <laughs> the seat will be open in case the shit is scared. And then in case you get the shit scared out of you, right? <laughs> It'll be clean. <laughs> clean and hygienic. Excellent.
excellent. Oh, and the, the spent the, the beer cans, do those go with you? Uh, they probably won't go on the cart, but we'll see. You never know. You can only put one in your hand, right? Nothing like going to the can with a can. All right. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, best of luck to you guys. You, is there anyone in the field here that you fear? I don't know. There's the canoe guys over here. And they look pretty fast. Yeah. I'm worried about these guys who haven't unveiled their cart yet. Oh, they look scared the crap out of us. <laughs> Matthew, you, you, heard it, you heard it here. No one has scared the crap out of them yet. Except for maybe that unveiled cart. It looks like a bed to me. <laughs> I don't, maybe they don't unveil it. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you guys. Appreciate it, and best of luck. Thank you. All right. Hello. I'm with uh, River West Radio. We're broadcasting from the from the cell phone through the TP. <laughs> and then, yeah, then onto the Internet. So is this a, is this is one of the carts, right? Okay, yep. Some, someone over there is worried that you guys might win. Is that a possibility today? Not ever. Um, no, not at all. Not at all. Holy Rangers aren't about winning. This is about spectacle, not about sport. Not winning. If we want, it'd be great. But uh, we're not really, we've never won a race yet. So let me guess, are you the rider here? Are there none? The riders. There are two riders. Two riders. You wouldn't want to be alone in bed now, right? Oh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> none never is. <laughs> none of the above. That's right. <laughs> Great. So we're still waiting for the other uh, person who's joining me, and uh, he should be around any moment now. Ah, okay. And the, who's queen mat or who's single mattress? Is it? It's a single, right? It is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it used to be mine, but now it lives in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> and now, it, now it's free. <laughs> so, all right, it's free. That's right. It's getting aired out a little bit. That's right. Okay. Well, best of luck to you guys. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and. Uh, Join us later at the teepee. Oh, we will. It, all right. Okay. So this is the this is the Holy Rangers. The That's Holy Rangers. Holy all right. High ho, silver. <laughs> all right. <laughs> wow. Wow. I don't even know if we're going to be able to cover all all the carts today. Let's see. Who have we missed? Oh. There's a little tin foil boat. And oh, oh. Here's here's one. Wow, with a gun. Okay, it is basically uh, a plywood box with uh, old shells mounted on it. Drop zone across the front. Hi, I'm with River West Radio. I'm trying to uh, describe describe these carts for the people listening on the the radio. So, are you the builder of this cart? Yeah. Yeah, it really looks like um a, a death machine. Is that? <laughs> but it probably has another purpose, right? Uh, where did you come up with the idea for it? Well, I'm part of the, uh, a group called the Milwaukee Bombers. We're an Aussie rules football team. We are internationally traveled throughout the United States playing against other cities. Wow. Rugby or football? Australian rules football. So it's a combination of different sports together. Wow. That's one. That sounds that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> I don't I don't know about a lot about it, but that takes um. A lot of toughness, right? No, not really. Uh, not even. It doesn't take a whole lot of skill. Pretty much, you just got to be out there and play. It's a whole lot of fun. There's uh, 18 guys on each side of the field, 36 total, and it's pretty much a all all gone sport. It's uh -huh. a great time. We have a women's team and a men's team, and then at the end of the year, which is in October, uh, we have nationals. Uh, last year, we took uh, first place in Division Four uh, with the Ohio team. And then, uh, which is down in Austin, Texas. And then this year, we're going to play nationals over in uh, Ohio. Wow, is that the Milwaukee Bombers? That's the name of the, the team. Yeah, you can check us out on Facebook with yeah. the Milwaukee Bombers or, or on our website, MilwaukeeBombers.com. Okay, and this card is representing representing that team. Yep. So where is your propulsion system? Are you the rider? <laughs> uh, oh, she's the driver in there. Oh, okay, there's the driver. We got grenades. And then we got right. a Gatling gun right here. Yeah. Oh, it's got to look at it for us. Yeah. We will. We will. There's, I know there's a lot of good carts out there, but this 
this is going to be up there. Yeah, there's a lot of great competition, yeah. a lot yeah. of cars that's beaten <laughs> from last year and previous years, and it's just a whole yeah. lot of fun. So this is my second year we're going yeah. to race on. Well, and you probably got some um, strong, fit boys here to push it, too. Love it. That's yeah. Love it. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Well, best of luck, then. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. And we're broadcasting from the TP all day, so. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's, yeah, we're just on the cell phone now. All right. <laughs> hey, we're so, yeah, that's what we figured. All right, all right. Thank you. Take care. All right, we're getting ready for the first race. It is the tin foil contraption. We did not get to talk to yet, but there is a boy of maybe two years old riding in the front car seat. Oh, they are now announcing the judges. is now announcing the rules for the race, which we heard earlier <laughs> were very few and probably fairly few. So, we're going to take a quick break and uh, be back for the start of the race. I just wanted to make sure I was. It, it, can you hear the guy on the megaphone? Oh yeah, I could. All right, I could hear it. It sounds good. All right, yeah, great. Then I'll keep going. Here we are, back at the start line. We're going to be broadcasting from the start line, alongside the three judges: Spike, the unofficial mayor of Milwaukee; Nick, Alderman for the 3rd District, and Malaley Cog, Alderman for the 6th District. There seems to be a bit of a lengthy announcement here from the uh, man with a megaphone. So we'll just sit behind the uh, pickup window. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the two racers today on my left, the Booze Crew. The Bulls crew with Jer Starlin and Jacob as the drivers and Mike and Bill on the crew and the Death Star. The Death Star. That is the tin foil contraption. Blazer as the driver and Bradley Blazer as the crew. I'm going to go over the Death Star first. All right, so we have the Death Star on our left, and we have the Booze Crew on our right, which is basically made up of all liquor bottles. Kingston is that Kingston Jamaican rum, and maybe some tequila, or most San Juan tequila, and a pirate flag, a pirate flag, and uh, <laughs> The uh, propulsion units are two bearded men with w wigs and rags and, and nice shirts. Here we go. They're gearing up for the race. Okay, now this is the, one, this is the end line here, okay? You can start there, but it's okay. Are you ready? What? I Okay. Yes, yes. Oh, good. Oh. No. And they're off. Wow. Okay, the, the Death Destroyer, Death Star, 
is taking a big lead, taking a big lead. The Bruce Cruiser is having a hard time here. It's doing circles. It's obviously more of a luxury trip. <laughs> it's, it's definitely, they're definitely in it for the relaxation. Okay, now the the Death Cruiser, Death Star, Death Cruiser, the tinfoil contraption, has made it around the turn, has made it around the pylon over at Wheel Street, and it's on its way back. The Bruce Cruiser is still about halfway. Okay, they have pass point opposite ways at this point. It is obvious who's going to win. The rider, the little three-year-old, and the rider is waving his sword, plastic sword in victory. You can hear the applause. The Bruce Cruiser is still on the track. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the judge has noticed. <laughs> A judge has noticed that the booze cruise did go the wrong way. <laughs> but that, that's that's typical of drunk drivers, I think. <laughs> oh, and there were riders. Two two very nonchalant youngsters <laughs> dressed as pirates. Uh -oh. so. Now we have our second set. This, 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 this is the green team. In this race will be the green team. Who, if I, we were to put bets on, it's probably going to be the winner today, but we'll see. This will be their first flight. Some of the kids are wearing wings. Others have long poles. There's one rider in the kayak. On, and the other team is from Central. They're the, the bowl of spaghetti. So it's the green team against the bowl of spaghetti. Okay, we have a very unresponsive man on a megaphone. We were trying to get the name of the green team. Yeah, that's green fly. So is the green fly team against the central spaghetti, and they're off. Oh, they, oh, this is a good race. A lot of effort, a lot of effort. Okay, it looks like the green team is ahead just a little bit. We come on the end. Wow, green team is taking the turn first, and now they've run into each other. Is this, is this, is, is this the design of the track? Wow, there is some sort, oh man, there's some sort of traffic jam here. Both spaghetti is trying to head one way. And the green fly team is trying to head the other way. Has this ever happened before? A traffic jam? Yeah, wow, okay. So, as you heard it from one of the judges, this is usually a much more polite match, but this is, wow. If these carts are out, but okay, the green fly team has made it around the corner and is headed back. That's going to push the bull spaghetti way back. They're still picking up the pieces. The green fly team is coming in for a victory. For a victory. Oh, and they stopped just in time with a little dance at the end line. Great race. This, this is... This is new to me, though. I did not know that there would be actual, actual physical collisions. Logger jam. And here comes this bowl of spaghetti, finally finishing the race after that long, hard push. Spike, can I ask you?
you what was the name of the noodle team? Uh, that was the uh, Team Winning, uh, sponsored by Central Cafe. Team Winning from Central Cafe. Okay, so Green Flag Team has had the victory over Team Winning. is very basic, but the rider has a, 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 a helmet, like a gladiator-style helmet with spikes. So they could be a very slim, fast, efficient team. The Born Losers, on the other hand, we talked to them earlier, they are a, a traditional soapbox with exhaust pipes. All right. So, as we know, the Born Losers have been racing the same vehicle for since the beginning of the races. That the Born Losers have, have been in every race since the, the conception of the race. Is that true? It could be. I, I've seen them most times I've been here, and, and they, they do lose every time. <laughs> it's the way that a lot of it is how your wheels are designed. Yeah, the, yeah, the designer Sparky mentioned that they do lose ball bearings during the race. And they're off. Okay. Uh, it looks like the, the trim cart there. Who is, what team is on the right there? The Spots. The Spots are in the lead. Oh, but they are going off track. They verge into the other. They're having a hard time controlling the vehicle, but they've still made the turn first. Okay, but here come the born losers. It could be close. They're both coming back this way. They've exchanged lanes. They're headed back towards the judges' booth. But it looks like, with ease, the Spock team has won. The Spock team. Is that correct? The Born Losers have once again lived up to their name. Hey, how you doing? I'm just broadcasting on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> As the born losers, once again, the other team was the Spock. In lane two, the uptowner stage. So lane two is the uptowner stage. In lane two. And lane one. Oh, my buttery. Lane one, my butt reek, which is my up my butt reeks, which is which is a toilet on wheels. Right. And then the uptowner stage. On seven all right, okay, and in, in our left lane is gonna be the uptowner stage. Which is a stage. Which is basically a stage. Okay. So we have a stage racing against the toilet. Wow, and um and right, yeah, a belly dancer riding on the stage. Okay, I see. We see that the rider of the uh, toilet contraption has the seat open, and he is currently pulling his pants down. So this is going to be very realistic. <laughs> okay, no, he's thought better of it, and he's just simply un no, he is not thought better of it. Okay, but he does have a good set of boxers on. So this is still PG material. Okay. <laughs> I feel like he's facing the wrong way, too. <laughs> the toilet contraption actually has the rider facing back. 
towards, with no seat towards the pushers with no seatbelt, right? <laughs> his belt, right. The only belt is around his ankle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And our uptown stage is in position. She has, oh, I think she's turning her boombox on. So she's going to probably be dancing during the race. Yeah. <laughs> no, but there's that new tactic that we've seen down there where they actually clog up. The turn, right? Well, that's not a new tactic. Oh, it's okay. okay. That's a new is how long it lasts. It's usually there's maybe one little part. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've been involved in many, many crashes. But have you ever had it last for a second? Yeah. Uh, how, how long is the time on this? So, well, we have to look Well, I wouldn't want to crash into a toilet, that's for sure, and they're off. Well, okay. So flush, the toilet team is pretty fast in taking the definite advantage here. They are halfway down the course. The belly dancer, though, is getting a lot of looks and applause. She is getting a lot of appellation. They are taking their time. But the, the toilet team has slowed down here now, too. They may actually be having technical difficulties. Uh, they're having a very hard time making the turn. That is going to be a problem later on. This turn is taking them a long time. Okay, at this point, the stage is a little over halfway down the course. But the toilet team has started to make its way back along the left lane. They should be able to avoid a collision here. Okay. They definitely avoid each other. And the toilet team is on its way back. <laughs> oh, oh, no! Okay, oh, well, we have... You, you can hear that. That was the first casualty right there. The top of the toilet came off and was broken on the roadway. So... <laughs> but they made it back safely and are the victor. <laughs> and the rider is now pulling up his hands. Bring up all the speed up. <laughs> Push it. Push it. Push it when you're done. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. The megaphone man announcer is taking a nap on the road as the uptown stage makes its way leisurely back. <laughs> <laughs> like, she is getting she is getting a continual round of applause all the way through this. That is remarkable. People are really enjoying the show. Really enjoying the show. Here it comes the uptown stage. They may be last, but they are first in the mind of the crowd. Give them a hand. All right. Okay, here we have the, the next race setting up. All right, at, at this point we have most of the ceramic from the top of the toilet cleaned off the road. <laughs> so as victors so far, we have the green team. Oh. The Holy Ranger will be in the right lane. The drop zone in the left lane. Now we spoke to uh, one of the drop zone members earlier. We also spoke to the Holy Rangers. We know the Holy Rangers are not not necessarily looking for a win here. The drop zone with the uh, makeshift Gatling gun mounted on the front and uh, manned with rugby players is probably more likely looking for the victory. So remember, Milwaukee Bombers, Australian Rules Football.
That is the drop zone key. They have two pu two pushers. The nun appears to be sick in the Holy Ranger bed. This is the bed on wheels. Probably a single size bed. Are you ready? And they're off. Okay, the drop zone vehicle is taking an early lead. Wow, okay, there was something disgusting just shot at the at the Holy Ranger team. The Holy Ranger team has lost one of their riders who has the uh the sheet draped over his head and he is now chasing the bed. Oh, there's all kinds of red liquid being blurted out from who knows where. There must be a baby. That's what it is. A, there's some type of full-grown man baby that has been born on the race course. Here comes the drop zone team. An easy victory. Ryder did not even have to use a grenade. And they pull into reverse. Awaiting. Awaiting the Holy Ranger bed team. Oh, and here it comes. Wow. Wow. I think this is the first time there has been a, a, a live birth on the race course. <laughs> <laughs> that was disgusting. <laughs> well, it's a good thing they don't have to race the second time there. So the victor was <laughs> was the drop zone. Wow. Good race, guys. Good race. <laughs> <laughs> would you? I just wanted to ask. Would you guys do that again? Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> so if, if they're prepared to race again, if they had to, do you have another baby? Uh, no, they're oh, almost yeah. there. Um, actually, the devil is going to give birth to me. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this is a continuing saga. Which I have to. lane number one. Okay, the Death Star is back. Blood all over the place. And there's blood. At, as they know, I said there's blood all over the race course at this point. So the spot is that uh, the team in the, uh, the right is the Spock racers. Um, yeah, Sporks or Spock. Oh, the Spocks or the Sporks? Sporks. That's a fork and a spoon together. That's yeah. a fork. Right. I don't know if that's a C or an R. Oh, is it Spock or Spork? Spock. What's a Spock? Okay. As in Vulcan. Live, live long and prosper. So the Spocks are uh, in the right lane. The Death Star, the tinfoil contraption, is in the left. Again, we have a... Maybe a three-year-old in the rider seat there, with I would imagine a proud father pushing. It is essentially a wheelbarrow covered in tin foil with a car seat. Okay, here we go. And they're off. Okay, it looks like the Spocks are taking a small lead here. The close race, though. The Spocks have three propellants, three pushers, three human beings to push the cart, the simple cart with a young child on it. Okay, they're making the turn now. Wow, very close race. Very close race. The Death Star took the inside turn. The Spocks are still in the lead, though. They have, they have the advantage in pure power with three pushers, and they are coming in for the victory. The Spocks have won. Fox have won, and the father from the Death Star looks tired. Good race, good race. There's hugs all around. So the Spocks are event are essentially a uh, bike, a bike carrier with two wheels. Okay. Maya Butt Reeks and the Green Team are the next race. And what we have here are 
previous winners. So we have the green team in the right lane. Maya Butrich, which is the toilet on wheels in the left. The green team is, again, a purple kayak on wheels with the handlebars to push and a steering mechanism, a rope steering mechanism. The announcer is now thanking the weather and global warming for this beautiful day. So we are simply waiting for Maya Butrich to get uh, lined up. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, they have the same rider. He must be drinking a lot of coffee, laxatives, laxatives to keep this thing powered. Okay, they had the vehicle turned around backwards. Remember, they are minus a top of a toilet. So the green the green fly team has a very very uh, interesting strategy here. They actually have a second set of pushers with poles, so they actually have five people pushing this cart. Very very strategic tactical move. They, I think they are very determined on winning. Okay, and they have exchanged they have exchanged riders. The toilet team has exchanged riders. And they're off. The green team is a early start, early lead, early lead. They look like they're going to happen. Oh, and the toilet team has already taken a spin out and landed in partly into the crowd. They're readjusting their bike while the green team has made the turn and is headed back in the left lane. Maya Butrich, the toilet on wheels, is uh, now in the wrong lane but has recovered. They will be able to finish the race most likely, although there's a there's a slowdown here. Oh, they're exchanging riders. They're putting new riders onto the green, the green fly team. Wow, they are piling it up. They have at least six young riders on the green fly team. Beautiful gesture. Beautiful gesture. And they're coming in. Large round of applause for the green fly team. And they have made it with lots of smiles and lots of people on the kayak. Okay, <laughs> the rider of the uh, toilet vehicle has actually switched the positions and has returned. <laughs> Very good race. Okay, but as as we earlier uh, suspected, this green fly team looks to be looks to be the team to beat. They really have shown shown a lot of. Uh, Effort and motivation no. and teamwork. Hey. And now, now we are just getting a uh, a word from our announcer with the megaphone and. Uh, Wow. Green fly team appears to be racing again in this next heat. We have must have narrowed the cars down. Here we go again. Wow, and it looks like they are preparing to race the drop zone cart. This is the cart with the Gatling gun powered Gatling gun powered by the rugby team. At least one member of the uh, Milwaukee Bombers Australian football team. But I'll say there is a uh, possible uh, Australian rules football player. So she has, she has blonde hair and helmet, the rider. The green fly team is preparing, is in the right lane. Yeah, I'm missing a wheel here. The, the, the fuel line. Oh, it's the drop zone. Drop zone is missing a wheel. Wow, okay. We have just noticed, one of the judges noticed that the drop zone team is missing a wheel. <laughs> 
So what, how this is going to play out remains to be seen, but it does give the Green Fly team an, a, a definite advantage. Wow. It's amazing that the drop zone team is even still prepared to race, but they look like they are, are determined to do well. On your mark. Get set. Go, and they're off. The green fly team, oh, okay, the grenades have come out. The drop zone team has released the grenades, but it had no effect on the green fly team. They are way behind. They're in the same lane. The green fly team is already turning the corner. The drop zone team is trying to get back in their lane, turn the corner. There is a slight little collision, but it looks like the green fly team is going to make it without a problem. And it's victory for the Green Fly team. So I must admit I am impressed with the Drop Zone team who managed to do that whole race, complete the race, and do a spin at the end without a wheel. Is, uh, is Fox still here because Fox has lost it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you heard it from us. Just Fox. We have the Fox team and the Green Fly team. Now, now, is, this is this is a disadvantage for the Green Fly team who has just raced two consecutive races, and now they have to race a third race. The Fox team has obviously had some time to recuperate. There seems to be some discussion on the course right now. Fox, that's correct. The judge is pointing out the Fox never lost. So they announced a the victor? Wow. Hey, this is River West Radio right here. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we're broadcasting. We're uh, Stonefly currently won. Oh, Stonefly, right, right. They won the race. Yeah. But the Fox team, Fox team never lost. How could the Greenfly team win if the Fox team never lost? Oh, I have no clue. <laughs> so, I, it'll be interesting to see what the judges do here. I, uh, uh, I, I personally like the uh, exorcism, the, the birth of the exorcism. Oh, yeah. That was uh, Hi, probably my hello. favorite. Hello. Very mess. Very. Yeah. Extremely. And, and yeah. hilarious. Yeah. But, they, you know, I, I thought afterwards that they, if they didn't have a second baby and, and they had one, it would have been difficult. Yeah. So, they, they, they didn't really plan no. for the future. But, of course, having a baby is never about planning for the future. Exactly. exactly. You know, it would have been really nice if the baby actually would have pulled us some plane and pushed and pushed the car. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It was like, there'd be a secret weapon. Like, oh, yeah. no, we haven't got an extra person to push. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually a sort of devil with horns, right? Yeah. Yeah. He had a mask. Yeah. Devil mask. Yeah. So they 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 did. It did sound like they would be back next year. There's a sequel, they say. Uh, <laughs> that would be good. So we'll see next year. Yeah. Exorcism yeah. two. Okay. Well, it looks the judges are deliberating right now, and it looks like it may the the Spock team may have basically uh, forfeited, and so that the Green Fly team. Uh, is now who is now taking a victory lap has won by default. Okay. Well, I'm not going to head back until I get the final word, but that seems to be the word on the street right now. That the Green Fly team is the winner. Yeah, the crowd is breaking up. All right. Let's see. Oh, I see. The judges The judges at this point are, there must be other prizes. There's more than just simply, right, uh, a victory for speed. There are other prizes involved. Style? There's a style prize. There might be another one for some inane <laughs> other reasons. You know, we know there are at least seven free days. 
You know, there's at least style. There's definitely speed. So I have to say the green fly team had a lot of style, too. I, although the, You know what? They should have one for gumption. We could give that to the toilet team. They're just here outright. Like, I'm going to take a shit in front of, you know, 300 people. Yeah. <laughs> or are the food crews for um, just taking the easy Yeah. Game? The dude fries. The dude fries? The dude fries. The dude fries, yeah. So they, they're, their riders were, were definitely underage. Yes, so that's a, <laughs> that was sort of all of me. <laughs> okay. So I, we will stick around here for a little bit. I believe there is an award ceremony. Okay, here we go. Of course, goes to And the green team is raising the trophy in victory. The imagination team goes to the spa. Imagination award. Oh, that was a birthday present. Oh, for imagination. Well, they probably gave him the imagination award because the cart left a lot to imagination. Oh, there is there, there is a prize for gumption. <laughs> Uptowner stage. Uptowner stage. Wow, that is a surprise. We're we're broadcasting here doing the River West Radio. So I didn't even realize there was an award for gumption. Gumption, imagination, and speed. And speed. Yeah. Okay. So speed was green fly. It definitely was very fast. Yeah. They had a clever pushing mechanism with those poles. Right. Yeah. Kayak is a pretty aerodynamic uh, yeah. Yeah. piece of apparatus. Yeah, it was really nice when they had all those riders at the end. Yeah. That was, yeah. And so the Imagination Prize went to the stock team, I think, because it left a lot to the imagination. You had to imagine. The, there you go. That's good. You had to imagine the, the, the cart. The, the cart. The cart. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it. You have it. Hey, how you going? Yeah. I'm just broadcasting for River West Radio right now. The little kids are checking out the carts. Yeah, yeah. Did you have a stimulator? Yeah. Did you have trouble with your car today? I'm having trouble with it. Okay, well, I can bring you a set of cables. Oh, cool, thanks. Yeah. yeah. That's my rush. Okay. Yeah. You can walk everywhere today. So, have you got any good, uh... Yeah, coverage? Uh, yeah, yeah, I covered the whole race. So, did you see the car racing? Yeah. Who did you want to win? Everybody's a winner. <laughs> the green, yeah, the purple kayak. Purple kayak. Yeah. Do you want to see a toilet one? Yeah, there's twig bars in the bottom. I like the one with all the blood. The hatch. That's my favorite. Yeah. The hatch one. Well, the ha that's what I called it, the hatch. Uh, okay. So you see, they, they already hatched the, uh, they hatched the little devil. Okay. That's what that was. Yeah. 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 I got to see a on it. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one over there with the bed. Yeah. I'm going to go turn off the radio, and then I'll be back. <laughs> hmm? The guy with the nut? Oh, yeah. You got me in the back, and he was handing his pillow horse. He, he's pretending, yeah, he's pretending he's having a baby. He had a baby. He was a nun having a baby. Yeah, I want to know something. Oh, he was underneath it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Okay. Well, I'll see you guys soon. All right, we're headed back to the station now. You can see there has been a uh, lot of enthusiasm among the youngsters there. It's rare that they see something uh, this exciting. So, here we are, back at the radio station. Great.
an important guest. We need Good to talk to them. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we are in the TP, broadcasting from the TV on Center Street during Center Street days. And uh, we'll probably be messing around with some mic checks for a little while and, and getting everything uh, tuned in. So uh, it sounds like Sounds like hey okay there's chilly chill. Yes, I is. is it is this is it your show? Uh no. Isn't my there a show, chilly chill my, show my today? Show, my show is chill chill on friends. Right. When I'm not there, my friends are. When your friends are. My friends are. Is this a regular time for chilly chill though? Uh today? we're always chilling up here. Yeah. This is especially. a tippy man. This is a place right. to bite and be in feast. Yeah, it is. It yeah, is, it, and it shelters the noise pretty well. Yeah. Almost it, better than the store. Yeah, and 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 and. and Provokes and invokes conversation. And there you go. <laughs> no, nothing in the middle. No. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say, ah. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> There's nothing like a long silence, you know. Just a, Not on radio. <laughs> no, huh? Uh, you know, I've there's been experimenting with There's a pregnant pause, and then there's, you're off yeah, the air. Yeah, yeah. It, it Switch the air. station. I think the recording goes off. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember hearing something. I think this was, yeah, actually I heard it on the radio, and they're talking about, uh, like, Native Americans and the way they speak and uh, and that they take pauses yeah. after they say something. Not and, always. No, not always. Of course <laughs> not. No. But it's, it's sort of contrary to us Euro Europeans sometimes because... They, or especially Americans. I want to say Americans, Americans because yeah. you have to talk. Yeah. Europeans don't do. Yeah. They do. They do stay. Yeah. You'll ask a question and they'll think before they speak. They'll think about it, and then they'll say something rather than blah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And pauses are good to let things think. They are. It is hard on the radio. The only time I've ever heard like really nice long pauses was is on classical station music. You know, yeah. at classical stations where they have the end of the, you know, the symphony, and then it's just. There's Pat. Come uh, on the in. Silence. You know, Complete for people silence. to absorb. Yeah. Come on in. Yeah. But if you're just tuning Welcome. in, um, if you're just tuning in, yeah, you then you, you down, think, is I can it just working? Stand. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like really. Yeah. Down, <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. Well, this this is a open door policy here today, so we 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 want people to see the inside and the outside of the teepee. Well, and I'm we're, here. I'm here today um, because my interview is with a bucket and a bottle of water. Okay. And I guess I have to translate, so. <laughs> okay. What does the water say? <laughs> Please. <laughs> it's very yeah. still and quiet today. <laughs> ah, I think yeah. it wants to be drunk. <laughs> the bucket's a little tinny. Have you? Know, you yeah. I'm asking people to come uh, to uh, Center Street Days 
and participate in River West Radio today in the middle of the street in a TP. Yeah. How often does that happen? TP. And we're also doing the uh, sort of the street performance of Gallop. Uh huh. So, oh, what is? Will you come back though, Pat? Okay. Good time is some. Well, what it is is um, you come as you are, or um, any way you would like to dress, as uh, elaborate as you want. We just ask that nobody comes naked. This is the <laughs> This is today. This is, this is today happening well, today. Okay. Right outside the tent here. Well, if you ask people not to come naked, then they're probably going to come in their underwear. It's like an invitation that, to well, come in your. Well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what you need to do is come up with an idea in Here. your head and then express that idea in express a gesture. Express yourself. Dun, da, 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 da. Right. But you have to express your idea uh, in a gesture of some sort. And you hold that gesture for 20 minutes. That's or a long time. if there's some sort of movement that you want minutes? with it. 20 yeah. minutes? That's a long time. It is. Yeah. If there's some sort of movement, like if you know, maybe your gesture is you're going to you know, hit a tennis ball. Just as an you example, you could slowly very take slow. you 20 minutes to do 20 that gesture. To get from where wow. you start to the end. A, a 20. <laughs> if you can hold out for the 20 minutes, you know, 15 yeah. is good. But um, uh, there's also the, you know, the, um, I guess the photo finish. Yeah. You know, so but, you could do it every five minutes, move into a different. Yeah. So and then uh, you, know. you know there's just donations. People throw money in the bucket, and you know a portion of that will go to River West Radio, and portion can go to whatever charity you what, you know whatever you charity want. you decide. Right. Or, or if <laughs> if that charity is yourself, yeah. oh. in the sense of an artist, you <laughs> uh-huh. know to help fund your. Uh, attic. Basically, they're going to tuck money into your underwear band. No, they put oh, it in oh, the bucket, okay. and right. then. Um, so it's kind of like a fundraiser inside yeah. a fundraiser and inside a fundraiser. Yeah. So I encourage anybody to Wh- come on to try Where it. will that be exactly? It's right outside the tent. Mm. It starts oh, anytime. Right outside the tent and it starts at any time. Anytime. If there's wow. nobody up there, you can come and stand up for 20 minutes. And then there's other people who pick specific times that they want to... Do you have a sign okay. then? I think that we explain? need a couple more people to just one because one no, person... It can you know, be two people. You know, I like the idea of... How about five people? Five people, if they all hold still for 20 minutes, whatever Ooh. you want, you know, concoction you want to come up with or mixture, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, well, I... And it I, generates. It really yeah. generates a lot 20 of... 20 minutes. People are going to be surprised how long 20 minutes is, yeah. though. Cause I, well, <laughs> last year we did it, and um, it was surprising. I had... Uh, I know one girl who uh, did it three different... Three times. So she did it almost an hour and a half. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and did you raise a lot of money? Is it? They, yes. Yeah. We actually, we really Excellent. did. Wow. The, the kids is love it? it because they just can't believe that uh-huh. you're real. And this is going to allow the radio station to buy more cables or... Um, it oh. should. Yeah, well, yeah, headphones, yeah. Um, yeah, headphones, things of that nature, wires, uh, yeah. whatever. Look, everybody. So there's that, and then there's, uh, you know, again, if it's the fundraiser inside a fundraiser, it, yeah. you know, it could actually feed somebody tonight. Okay. Well, here, I'm going to check levels. I want to just switch mics with one of the judges of the cart races. Yeah, you got any questions for me, Ian? Yeah, actually, make your own question. <laughs> Hello? What is the meaning of life? What? Ah. The ultimate question. Well, I came in here to find out. What's what's? Oh, uh, you're the alderman, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to talk to you. Oh, <laughs> on the air or off? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's, let's make the, take of. a private <laughs> to the public. What's the deal? <laughs> yeah. No, I'd really like. To, I want to do an interview Thank with you. you so I can ask you what it is you actually do because I had a conversation with someone about a week ago and they said, "Oh, who's the alderman? What does he do?" Right. And so my question was going to be, you know, all the wonderful uh, things you do for the community. Uh, yeah, well, I would say uh, it depends on the day. I mean, there's a lot of community events like this where it's, what did I do today? I just sat in the back of a pickup truck and judged a cart race. Okay. You know. That's great. Yay. Yeah. people know, what happened to the Spock team? Yeah, well, we ended up, uh, we gave them the Imagination Award because they had to imagine they lost the speed race because they never did. Because you had to imagine the rest of the cart. Yeah, you had, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, let's be honest. It wasn't that elaborate of a display. I mean, they just had a really cool helmet on the, the kid in the cart. But because, you know, I don't know if you guys follow the cart race closely, but there were 10 racers, and then so the five advanced to the next round, and and they forgot one of the five for Uh-oh. the third round. Or then three advanced to the next round after the five, yeah. and then they screwed up, so somebody didn't get to 
participate in the final. So we, oh. and, but the judges have two awards: a gumption award and an imagination award. So uh -huh. we, we gave the imagination award to the team that that should have had a chance against the green team, which did a great job. They were in the kayak on Purple wheels and, and yeah, yellow they had some and fast yeah, and yeah, very yellow. well designed car. If they hadn't won the speed award, they might have won one of the other two awards. And they're a group, a group of uh, teenagers in the Milwaukee area who do urban agriculture around water, food, and, and jobs is kind of their wow. priorities. They work for what for was the name of their team? Their team was the green team. The or green, the green well, actually green fly. Green team is their their real the name of the work they do. Green Fly was the name of their team because it was the old Stonefly yeah. cart. And the uh, Stonefly, obviously, is the old Anopa here on center. Yeah. But the uh, Stonefly, the reason they picked that word is it's the one of the first animals that will come back to a clean river. So as a river is getting cleaner, the Stonefly is an indicator species. Oh. So that's why the owners of, of the old that. Onopa Brewery chose that name. So that's the indicator that uh, River West is getting cleaner. The river itself. River West, like we can't, that, the other indicators of that, but the river itself gets, is, yeah. is cleaner when the stone yeah. fly comes No, back. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> symbolically. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. And these guys who, did they build this cart? I think the cart had been built a year or two ago by the, because I remember from previous years judging that cart, but then they brought in this, this green team and they were, well, to, to be fast in the cart race, you need a combination of some strong people pushing. Yeah. And also, but you need well-designed wheels and yeah. turning mechanisms. Yeah, I noticed that they, yeah. their turning mechanism yeah. was tight and their wheels were just, you know, real fast. Frictionless, yeah. Yeah, so they were almost flying off the ground there. And, and this, group of, uh, this group, the green team, what is it they do outside of car well, cart racing? I don't know every detail of what they do, but they work for uh, the Earthworks nonprofit or ground, Groundworks, I think, and they, they work on several urban gardens. And the idea is to, you know, to collect rainwater, to, to grow food for the community, and then they hire teenagers to, to, to do that work of harvesting the rainwater and harvesting urban agricultural crops. And these were some of the teenagers who work, or were these? The yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, can you go, do you know anything else about this, uh, this urban agriculture? I mean, is it, I know that we have a couple gardens here. Yeah, I asked them. I, the gardens that, we have several in River West. Um, the gardens they work on are, are just west of River West, I think, like okay. on third in Concordia and fifth in Locust they mentioned I think is there one on, on fifth in Locust fifth and oh, something nice. they were they were sort of in the range between like in the Harambee neighborhood it sounded like where most of their gardens yeah. were oh ah, wonderful all right well the the car race is really is what kicks river uh, Center Street days off it sure well, does how long has it's it always been around the car race as long yeah. as I can remember yeah, uh, at least but I I five think, years? Oh, least. more than five. Uh, I think five it, it's at least 10 or 15 at this point. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a long time. Certainly a very distinctive community event. And I'll, I'll be going in the dunk tank at, at 1 p.m. That's what I hear. You yeah. went last year, too. Uh, yeah. Do you go it, every year? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep trying to think of an excuse. but <laughs> if Doug you could, the alderman. <laughs> Here's your chance. Yeah. He didn't fix that pothole. Now's right. your chance to get even. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, let me ask you this, okay, this is for me. Yeah. Um, is there any chance uh, a few people, filmmakers, can maybe get a grant of some sort, a small grant, to make a video, like a small documentary about the Center Street days? I think it'd be a nice thing to put on public. Uh, yeah, TV. well, you can you can apply every year. The Arts Board does give out grants for community-based projects. That would fit right in line with that. They're not big grants though, just a couple thousand dollars because there's been a be lot of all, cuts. Yeah, you know, this is Milwaukee after all. And they require a match, you know, so you need to have have at least fundraise or, or contribute an equal amount. But uh, you could look at the Arts Board grants. That's through public funding that I know about. Is I know it for the 5th District or is it something? No, that's, for, that's citywide. That's citywide. citywide. Yeah, and there's also, and, and those are the kind of projects, community-based, that we try to encourage, whether it's theater or a, any medium, really. But we try to uh -huh. encourage community-engaged projects. Um, and... But I know there's a number of private foundations that give grants mm -hmm. too, although every, everybody's probably giving out less than they used to. But yeah. I think that's a great idea. I know someone made a really great documentary about the River West 24 bike race. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. I was is, it, is it already on um, some place? Oh, I saw TV? the trailer for it. Or did I see the whole thing? Did they show the whole I may have just seen an extended trailer for it over at the public house. I don't know uh -huh. if the whole thing is out yet or not. But I know they had a very extended trailer. Yeah, I saw her filming, so uh -huh. it was really exciting. And I, I did uh, just um, a small brief thing for 
uh, River West 24 for my show, which was on Community. In fact, you're in it. Mm -hmm. So is this gentleman. Yeah. I don't think you were there. No, no. I'm, I, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just asking people what River West Radio, I'm sorry, River West 24 meant to them. And uh, it's maybe about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you were doing it at the start race. Yeah, yes, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it came out very nice to put some music to it, cut everything up together. And it was very exciting, you know, there's the start and then the finish and then everybody, you know, uh, just how what they, fo they they thought and how important they they felt the uh, the bike race was yeah. and what their experiences were and why they came from all over the place mm -hmm. to be a part of this. So that's a I really, saw so many it's people from all over America and the yeah. world. I think I've seen some yeah, people from Netherlands. A guy from here. Colombia. Colombia. Yeah, and you know that that and this famous. are the two th and Locust Street Fair are the the yeah. three things here in River West that really stand out. We need more stuff like this. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, also, I would I would put the Kilbourne Park Tuesday Music Series on that list. Now, tell us about that. Oh, well, that's gonna be well it just ended a few year. weeks ago, but it's all summer, yeah. and, it, and they're putting in a new amphitheater now for it, so yeah. it'll make the sound a little better. But it's a great view. It's probably the best view of the city from inside the city. So where is Kilbourne Park it's, located? It, you're looking uh, mostly south, but kind of a 180 panoramic view. If you go to the top of Reservoir Park, you have a 360 view. So that's but Kilbourne But the music, Park? well, that's... It's, no, actually, it's Kadish Park. Kilbourne Park is really the reservoir. They're all kind of one big stretch of green, ah. though, separated by the curve of North Avenue. I so it's the part between... Really nice for hiking. Yeah, yeah. It's the part between the curve of North Avenue and Commerce Street, Yeah. which is the uh, Kadish Park. Yeah, no, we have wonderful. we got classic cars coming down Center Street right now. Oh. Are they local? Come and see. I, I come on see down them. right now and see the classic cars. Are you guys talking They're pretty awesome. Check out the cars yeah. and get some coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Tell Ian to come on in here if he wants yeah. to. Yeah, Ian, the guy who's just yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, so the Kilbourne Park, so they're putting in a band show? Yeah, they're putting in a band shell, which some people were worried it would be big and would block the view. It's going to be a very small band shell that will kind of fit into the landscape, I think, and, and be a nice addition. That's nice. And it'll, it'll make it easier for them not to bring a tent for every performance. And then ultimately we might even get more performances there. That's I'm great. trying to encourage people, we should just spend more time in that park whether or not there's a show. I mean, because... Yeah. For me, half the fun is almost, you know, the show ends around dusk, and I usually, with my friends, hang out even a half hour past dusk and look, look at the stars, enjoy yeah. the city, and you say to yourself, why don't we just come out here any day of the week and enjoy yeah. enjoy the twilight? Yeah, it, I mean, it's the perfect spot. It's, you know, as far as seeing all of downtown, that's the place to go. And since River West is really pretty close to the highest point in Milwaukee... I think it's the highest natural point in Milwaukee yeah. County. Yeah. Is it the, I think it's what, Keefe? in uh, Humboldt, right? I think oh, I thought, I was assuming it was the reservoir. No, the it's not actually, hill. it's, I think that's why the antennas are that way, but okay. Keith, someone told me exactly, right, right by Fratney in Keefe, I think it's actually. Really? The actual highest point, yeah. Huh. Higher yeah. even than the hill? Yeah, because it's a gradual, you, gradual. Go, you gradually go okay. up, so you don't even notice it. But as far as... Well, that's an art project I'd like someone to commission, is a, is a three-dimensional topographical uh, map of, of River West. That would be really nice. You that know, would accurate. be very cool. Yeah. And they have, I know they have the, the you know, uh, housing section uh, computer graph that you can look up, you know, right. where all the wires are. And, but that would be kind of neat, you know. Uh, maybe something uh, you talk to the geography department at uh, UWM. Right. Maybe you know? they already have it in the, in the shelf yeah, somewhere, maybe. in a closet, <laughs> yeah. It <laughs> could be. Could be. Well, this, that's exciting, too. So what else goes on in River West? Yeah, what else goes on? I mean, a, a lot goes on. Like I say, there's that music series. Uh, there's Center Street Days, Locust Street Days. There's also, this is the second festival this year on Center Street. There's Rocker Box. Rocker Box. Yeah, yeah. that's right. The motorcycles. But, and now we've got the radio station, which yeah. is like a, a live community event every day from 3 to 11. I've that's been true. participating in a couple shows. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, there's the Stone Shoop radio show, which I participate in some Tuesday nights. And I now have a sh uh, the Packer Verse radio show, which is every Thursday night. Oh, yeah. That I've been hosting. That. Good. Yeah. And I got to start doing, I guess, more interviews, too, because I know the, the, the killer comedians want to interview me. And, yeah. and you want to interview me about yes, what the... <laughs> about what the uh, alderman does all day, which yeah. I'd be happy to talk about in, in more detail if you want, because yeah, it's, it's really an exciting job. I get to learn about all, all the ways that cities uh, spend and spend money on potholes and, and uh, police and fire and libraries yeah. and, and 
you know, planning. Those are important things. It really is. For, it's very important. For the community members yeah. to know. And then since, you know, we, we podcast all this, that there's no, you know, there's always a, a resource then. So if somebody, yeah. you know, is like, calls you up and say, what does the alderman do? You can just say, well, Reverse Radio has this, you know, and you can go... Uh, have a listen. Just tune in for Packerverse. Yeah, Let's see Packerverse, what the Alderman does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't. Right. So, uh, Ian, any any thoughts? You any questions you had about the judging procedure or the race itself? Or? Well, yeah, I thought it was no. The races were great. The races were great. Um, I I I guess I still don't understand why the Spock team did the Spock team for, forfeit. Is that what happened? They did not no, want to do the final. It was, it was a mistake. Okay. And the race here, organizers made a mistake, and the judges tried to rectify the mistake by giving the uh, Spock team the Imagination Award. Oh, okay. I see. And you're right. Because that's what I noticed is that the Green Fly team w- w- had to race consecutively twice, and they would have had to race consecutively three, three times. times. And the judge just yeah. forgot about the Spock team. They should have had oh. the Spock team play the other team that Green Fly oh. beat the last time. And then they should have had Green Fly play the winner of that. Okay. So Spock, Spock so. never lost. Right. Well, like maybe River West is. I mean, these types of events are not necessarily known. It's for probably them. not the end of the world that there'll <laughs> no. be an asterisk forever on the 2012 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Center Street Days car right, race. But right. there will be for those of you that keep it, careful track. It was. It was totally. Which is no one. <laughs> it was totally enjoyable. It was the yeah. first kart race I'd ever seen in full. Oh really? Yeah, because I saw I saw the end of last year. So I saw when Stella Sparkle, or the. The, the young girl, 12, yes. and her brother won right. last and they, year. And they, and they had the, probably the best celebration ever. They, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> People loved it. People absolutely loved it. And uh, they were really fast. Yeah. You know, they were stripped down and lean, but they were fast. Although this team, yeah. this green team, was fast this year, too. And they I, might I noticed, be up there with the all-time champions. And they had speed. that strategy. They had five pushers because mm-hmm. they had the poles behind mm-hmm. them yeah. that it gave them the extra two pushers. So I wonder if we'll see that strategy again in future years. Certainly, if anyone wants to beat them, they, they better come up with something because those guys. Yeah. Oh, the only way somebody tried to beat them was by cheating, by blocking their passage around the turn. And yeah, well, I yeah, I, and I, it was confusing. Who, who knows? Someone could have lost the wheel very easily. Did you see the races, Chili? No, no, I'm not. You know, into racing. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm more in, <laughs> well, either I'm in the race, you know, either I'm yeah. racing. I don't know. I, I could not. You know, like people like to watch. Uh, NASCAR, you know, a bunch yeah. of cars going in circles. Yeah. I, I could never understand that. Well, you really didn't have to be into racing to watch this, because some of the some of the actual contestants were not into you racing. You just had either. to be into like yeah. just regular old entertainment. Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. life, the spirit this, of the. Uh, this was this was the very roots of entertainment <laughs> here. Yeah. I guess yeah. I yeah. Next year. Yeah. Yeah. This is the like I said. This is the first year I actually caught the whole thing. So th- we're we having a parade of classic cars now. Apparently, Coming yeah. Center Street days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're they all local cars, you yeah. think, or they're just Milwaukee cars? Well, they're good-looking cars, yeah. Uh, take a look. Yeah, they're from the I- neighborhood, you think? Well. Uh, I've been in the neighborhood for a while. There's Packer plates on that one. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> all right. Yeah, but, yeah, so. Pat Small was in here earlier. Rookie. He's got the Packer, the 1956 yeah. Packer green and hey yellow. Hey, there. We are River West Radio. We are hey, broadcasting Nick. from the TV. And you're welcome to join. If you want. Everybody is welcome to River West Radio. Great. We might have an interview candidate here. Yeah. Okay. We have a, a young Griffin that is uh, just a little mic, mic shy. A little shy of the microphone. <laughs> okay. Hey, Nick, can I ask you a personal question about your job? Sure. Okay. Okay. Everybody wants to know what is really going on behind closed doors. <laughs> closed doors? What doors? Yeah, well, <laughs> doors, the doors are it's like, it's doors like this are every day in a teepee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just one long teepee session. All right. Yes. Have a mic. Have a mic. <laughs> right. All right. Bye, Chili Chill. We have a new guest. <laughs> All right. So how long have you been down here? Just about four minutes or so. Speak into the microphone, please. Oh, just about four minutes. So you missed the whole cart race. I did, yeah. Who won? Well, there's three categories. There's speed, imagination, and gumption. Right. You want to know who was the fastest? 
Well, well, well okay, gumption. What? Gumption. And this was so weird. Uh -huh. I was I was announcing, right, with the cell phone yeah. there. Yeah. And I was talking to someone after the race before you announced the awards. Uh -huh. I said, you know, okay, I know there's an award for speed. Yeah. And it, Okay, and, these, and the other guy said, well, yeah, and there's also an award for imagination. I said, well, shouldn't there be a, an award for uh, gumption? And you and, just came up with that on your own? I came, I, I swear, yep, yep. Wow. And the wow. great spirit, I swear to the great spirit. <laughs> it just it popped in my head. And lo and behold, they actually had an award for gumption. And were you okay with who we well, gave the gumption award? I actually, award? I said the toilet. Uh, right, the tour, that's, uh, to pull your pants down in front of 300 people is that's got to be the well, definition. What about to, what about of to, to expose your entire midriff and shake it oh. <laughs> slowly? I guess yeah, that that you're right, you're right. Okay, there's really yeah, there was if you didn't see the race, so one of the contestants PG? was a bed. It wasn't PG. It was PG because well, PG the toilet was because he had PG boxes. 13. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> the birthing was a little pushing it. Yeah, that might have been our. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah. I saw some kids. That that were got pretty excited about the end and wanted to see the the, the bloodstained bed, but it was I believe it was just Kool Aid. So that's what that, that liquid is over there. All right, I wondered. Yeah, that was yeah. what was the name of that? That was yeah, called. What, yeah, I had a hard time with the names of the teams. Yeah. Uh... Sorry. Okay. That there. one I think was called Holy Rangers. The whole that's right. And I did. I talked to them before the race. The oh, you did. Ra yeah. Did they let on um, what they were gonna do? No, <laughs> no. They they kept. It was well guarded secret. But they did tell me after the race. I did interview them, and uh -huh. they said they're planning a sequel for next year. Uh oh. <laughs> well, what they did is they had a cross dressing. A nun. Ma nun. In give bed. birth to a... But you didn't know she was going to... I mean, you knew she was you in didn't. labor. I was oh surprised. And then, <laughs> and then they had a, a guy dressed in red tights emerge in a spattering... Under the sheets. Kool-Aid blood. Uh, right. Yeah, but. Sort of a little devil type of character. Wow. A very much a Rosemary Babies type of character. And they did commit. I mean, the cross-dressing nun was making some a lot of noise. Oh, you knew they were she committed. was... Something was happening. And at first I thought, <laughs> labor? Really? But... <laughs> Nuns don't have babies, but in this case, she did. So certainly a lot of imagination and gumption involved. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, and I don't want to give Maybe away. Maybe there needs I don't, to be you know, a fourth I, award. I, Chili Chill asked me beforehand what happens behind closed doors. I do want to respect <laughs> the judging process and maybe not not give away everything we discussed. But uh, certainly I think when you when you do something that pushes the envelope that much, maybe it's it's the performance that's its own reward. And we yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And to, with the booze cruise, too, Yeah. right? The booze cruise and the uptown stage. Uptown stage was simply a belly dancer on, yeah. a, on a movable stage. I mean, our three most they, elaborately yeah. decorated carts were all pushing the envelope in some way. One had a children, uh, two, two very small children inside about 100 empty liquor bottles. Yeah, I, I noticed then it was you like had, San Juan, yeah. tequila probably. And you know, maybe not the, maybe <laughs> not the picture world. we want on the cover of the River West Currents. <laughs> But this is River the... West now. <laughs> so this Let's not a, shy like away a, from who we are. A construct, it's constructed out of like a, what, a square or something? Like the, a window? The stage? Type thing? Or the... Yeah, these liquor bottles. What was oh, it? no, yeah. It was like it was like glued together liquor bottles basically attached to a cart on wheels. Well, you know, there's a history of the front page of River West flag. Currents and the cart oh. race. Because yeah. I think it was six years ago when someone lit the big explosion or the lit the big fire behind their cart right. and that made the front page of the currents it did. and at next year's cart race the fire department was there with a truck they were waiting oh <laughs> yeah, they were, yeah. They were, well they, so, they were ready to like arrest people if wow they were, yeah they were. <laughs> well uh, they were, fortunately no one got arrested for underage uh or underage drinking then huh <laughs> or operating while intoxicated. Right, yeah, they were there to put the fire out right away. Okay. And yeah, so there's yeah. been a history of, of what do we want to talk yeah. about too publicly about what happens at the car race. Right. And what, right. Well, <laughs> really, then this year was very mild compared right. to. Right, well, he did yeah. announce, actually, the MC did announce no fires. No fire. <laughs> okay. So, was there a fastest award? Yes. There, there yeah. was. And it was the Green Fly team. Yeah, and they How'd were they do fast. It? How'd they do it? How did, it was a kayak on wheels. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they had and they had five five like young adults pushing. They had one person steering with ropes on the front. Ropes on the tire kayak. probably had the best steering mechanism of anyone. Yeah. And they yeah. needed it because that kayak was long and with their huge team of people pushing, they 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 made that turn very difficult. Yeah, in it's true. So they but it's they true. had to be very precise and thinking yeah. ahead and making a looping turn. Yeah. yeah versus a yeah. tighter turn. Yeah. 
And they and was Dave. Was it a close race or? No, no. they they creamed everybody. Actually, yeah. yeah actually, mm-hmm. at 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 the very beginning of the races, I went around and talked to all the participants, the people actually mm-hmm. that were uh, entered in the race, and they all kind of would turn to the green and look <laughs> at the kayak, and it was just. It just was an instant. Quality think, of the design, but yeah. also the clear enthusiasm and vigor and youthfulness of the pushers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they were designed to win. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I mean, I at one point I said, if you were going to put your money somewhere, that was where it was. What's interesting is that Dave, who I think was captain of the team, and uh, he uh, is actually a boat builder. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what other comments did you get from them in your post-race interview? Well, when, when, oh, I did not talk to them post-race. I talked to them pre-race. Mm-hmm. And uh, one, of, one of the uh, younger participants said they had built it with their eyes closed. But this was in a very thick, like, uh, African accent. So, mm-hmm. you know, it could have meant anything. Well, I know they work, yeah, <laughs> they, they work on a lot of the community gardens in the neighborhood. Yeah. For, for the green team. Ground, groundworks. Yeah, groundworks. Right? That's what they represented. Yeah. I was also, though, they, the final race was them and Drop Zone. Yeah. Who raced without a wheel. That, yeah. And they were representing the Milwaukee Australian Rules football team. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, at least the builder of the They're the cart. ones that had the fake machine gun on the front yeah, of it? Yeah, they had the fake gun and, and, and the wheelers? grenades. Wheelers? Yeah, well, they, they were missing one out of four wheels, so they still had three. Okay. I found that wheel. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to save that, man. It's wow. sort of like a memento. Wow. Trophy. Cool. So... So come on in. Let's switch, switch around. I know. Yeah, here we go. I'm not. I'm going to go walk the grounds too. Ch- okay, chilly, yeah. chill. Okay. Chilly. Obscure comments. Right, we chilly, can... chill. I'm going to walk the, the grounds a bit and then I got to go in the dunk tank. Uh, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. yeah. New comic, everybody. The greatest <laughs> Alderman Field district I've ever seen. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. No. Thank you for what you do, Chilly, chill. <laughs> Is there anything, are there any events here that you shouldn't miss? Well, there is the dunk tank, yeah. which Nick is headed down to the dunk tank. Yeah. What, at what times will you be there? One o'clock. One o'clock? So it'd be worth going down there to see Nick get dunked. Yeah. <laughs> Spent a couple of dollars, started dunk yeah. Nick. It's what, worth the price. What time? Okay. Okay. Well, um... Yeah, oh. Well, tell me which way you're headed, and then I'll catch up with you. I am the human digital chili rapache. say gentlemen but it's not see it's like uh, the whole thing about um, gentlemen is that is gentlemen and gentle women and ladies are kind of like with um not gentlemen it's, it's, it has to do more like research I, I think it's lords yeah lords and ladies gentlemen and gentle women boys and girls Kids of all ages, welcome to Santa Street Days, the one and only dazed and confused. Been so long, it's not true. Ah, well, here I am stuck alone in a teepee, which is a, which can make a really beautiful home. Last summer, we put up the team right there on Locust Street where everybody does their market. 
And oh, it was gorgeous. It was there for actually not summer. It was for um, autumn and winter and spring. And people just stopped by the teepee. They lived in the teepee, cooked in the teepee, slept in the teepee. It was a teepee haven. I used to be a regular, um, but due to circumstances, the, P the teepee had to go. Tip is a beautiful thing. It's um, it's conical. People live in it, commune in it, smoke peace pipe in it. So uh, the other day, I think it was about 10 years ago, actually 13 years ago, I got invited to go to an American Indian ceremony called Sweat Lodge at the American Indian School of Milwaukee on Southside. Uh, one of the uh, there was this guy from Canada, he came over all the way to Milwaukee to marry a woman because he was like uh, a son of a chief and the lady, she was a daughter of another chief, so they never really met each other, but he is a chieftain's son, she is the chieftain's daughter, why don't they get together and make some chief babies, you know? But the fella was about 30, and uh, the girl, well, she was uh, 18. And you know, 18-year-old, she was like, I ain't gonna marry you, dude, man. You're too old for me. I, I don't even know you. You come up here to marry me, go marry someone else. <laughs> Let me find my own husband. Uh, but he was a really nice guy. And uh, before he departed back home to Canada, he held a sweat lodge ceremony at the Native uh, American school. And I was uh, lucky enough to get invited to this thing. So I was excited. They came over. I was like, um, how interesting. This is, uh, this is a ch like church that I've never been before. Because I've been to synagogues. I've been to churches. I've stopped by the Baha'i Temple, I've been to a few mosques, I've been to places. But Native American church, the sweat lodge, it is different. All the churches that I've been to has been made out of brick. They had um, a certain set of rules and procedures. They had a certain set of beliefs, uh, dogmas or whatever. Native Americans, well, here we are, spiritual beings in this, in this, um, in this bodies that we have, and there's also uh, a bigger spiritual world out there. There's all kinds of beings, um, animate and inanimate, that we are not exactly aware of, because our awareness is rather limited. Uh, an interesting thing about um, this church is that. Uh, they, 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 use, um, they use rocks as a, as a tool uh, to get closer to our, to who we are. The sweat lodge is basically uh, a half, uh, half spherical uh, thing that um, people make. And inside of this uh, igloo kind of looking thing is a big hole where red hot rocks go. So the first uh, people set up a big fire and they put big rocks in there. They heat it up till they get to be red. And then the rocks are picked up and put in the in a sweat lodge and the medicine man gets deer's horns. He uses uh, the horns of a deer to pick up the rocks and put them in the, in the hole in the middle. Then, uh, and around this hole, a whole bunch of people gather. Sometimes it's just men, sometimes it's just women, sometimes it's men and women. Um, I don't know if about uh, dogs and cats, and other um, pets and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure it has been done because it's not like um, it's not like there's a dogma. So 
there is uh, certain things that are traditionally mm, practiced, such as, well, some tribes have the door, the entrance facing the east, other tribes have it facing the west. Uh, it's just different traditions, different tribes, and people who are skilled in hosting the ceremonies, I'm pretty sure they can do uh, a Lakota ceremony facing the west and a Jibese ceremony facing the east. Because does it really matter? Which way is up? I don't know. We're just a big ball of, uh, just, just a big ball spilling in this, in this um, solar system, which also spins in the Milky Way galaxy, which also spins in this universe. Uh, and the universe, well, from what the scientists think right now, and I think it really makes sense that a universe is just one bubble out of infinite bubbles in the whole existence, which has no boundaries, no beginnings, no ends. And thus it is. So, the Sweat Lodge is a place where human beings can get in touch with their hearts. It's a place where you come to let go of all the knots and bonds that you keep your heart bound to. You, you, you open yourself up to the world. Not just to you open yourself up to the community, the people that you're with, uh, the beings that are around, the spiritual world as well. It is a place where spirit and matter uh, stop being so different. It is a place of mystery and it's real. I've been to lots of churches and synagogues and ceremonies and Buddhist temples, Hindu temples, and nothing have, uh, can be compared to the sweat lodge. So the red rocks, they go inside and people gather around the sweat. Then the medicine man, he closes the door so there's no light inside the sweat. Uh, and he starts pouring uh, water. Usually some water that's been prepared before with some medicinal herbs. It's uh, not a psychedelic thing. Uh, it's not a place to get high or something. Uh, uh, no, not really. A place to get high is, uh, you know, your basement, your backyard, your residence, uh, maybe a park, but a sweat lodge, uh, it's not a place um, for anything that messes with your mind. It's a place to clear your mind, not to um, mess with it. Is it for aerobics? Aerobics? Uh, yoga. Uh, there is a Hidden Yoga, Bikram Yoga, which is also in the 5th District up here on Commerce Street. Bikram Yoga does the body good. Is, is yoga aerobic? I would uh, say, I guess so. I'm not sure. Aerobic meaning cardiovascular? I think so. Hello. Hi. Well, I went Hi. to Bikram a few times, and Hi. yeah, my heart, my heart was pumping. Hi. It got Hi. postures for the heart, Hi. it got postures Hi. for Hi. the liver, it got Hi. postures for Hi. every my uh, internal organ and external. Uh, glands and muscles. Bikram yoga is all good. Hey, peace in to the east. <laughs> There's all kinds of bunch of people stopping by, checking out the TV, checking out. It's the, a lovely day down way. here at, at Center it's Street Days. Beautiful. Oh yeah. So, um, Eric, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Eric. Hi, Eric. <laughs> I'm Chili. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the extra crispy bass playing. We got the fairy, the fairies. Uh, the fairies extra, are all oh, for us. Extra crispy playing. Yes. Where at? Uh, up, up down here. 
Uptown Ra. Oh, okay. Uh, who are the extra crispy? Because do, can I eat them? Do they? You do can they certainly taste try. <laughs> what are they? The, uh, they're a uh, 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 second line style New Orleans uh, band from, from, from here in uh, Milwaukee. How many members are there? Oh, there's, I don't know, maybe eight, seven, eight, nine. Seven, I don't eight, know nine. exactly. So, what kind of music do they play? New Orleans style, New Orleans second fans. line, second line, New Orleans. Do you know ah. what that is? Yeah. You can, you can sort of hear him from now here. Can you well, you bump, can, but I don't think I don't know if the mics bump. pick it up. It goes like this. Bump, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, um, what's been good in the hood? I heard there's been um, nothing but good times up here in River West. Can't do the good times ever stop? Uh, it depends on who you are, I guess, you know. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, what, it depends on what trip you're on, you know. Oh, ah, Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Uh, that trip? You know, uh, well, somebody's on the sweat lodge trip, and <clears throat> somebody else is on the, the extra crispy brass band trip, and somebody else is just walking around, you know? Ah, walkabout. 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 Yeah, so I hear, um,. Ah, I hear uh, the sound of silence. Why, why, why is there silence in the world? Why do we have it? Is it real? Is silence real? That's what I want to know. What do you think? Is it real or do we think that it's real? Is it an illusion? Is silence an illusion? Uh, well, mm. I wouldn't say that silence is an illusion. I don't know. Some people say that the universe makes a sound. Come on in, come on in, come on in, so join the like, TP. Uh, <laughs> TP party tonight. Oh. oh, it's good to be back in the TP. Oh, we got a guest. Please, Hello. please, uh, yes. sit down, so sit down. Phone. Introduce yourself. Hey there. Hi. Uh, Julie Brandenburg from Compose Yourself. So. Compose oh, nice. Yourself. Bum, bada, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> so, River Rose Radio's in the house. <laughs> the TP. So, how are you guys doing? Well, I'm doing relaxed. We're doing and okay. Eric is doing? I'm doing fair. Fair, fair. Fair, What's fair your name? is good. Eric? Yeah. Yes. And I'm Chili. And yours? Julie? Julie. Julie. Nice yeah. to meet you. So, what is uh, Compose Yourself all about? What is it? Is it um, an organization? Is it a place I can go, chill? Well, I mean, sometimes one has to go and compose themselves within themselves. But as for the radio show, uh, it's a ah, show it's about a show. it's a it's a show about songwriting and composing and nice. basically we listen to local music, all local music of every kind of genre. And I see that um, Eric, you have an instrument attached to you. Yes. What what is that instrument? It's a it's acoustic guitar. Ah, so you could be on compose yourself. Oh yeah, I'd like that. That I would like that too. So do you write your own music? Yes. What type of uh, genre or what is it? Oh, um, it's uh, music. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, pretty eclectic, I guess. That's can you great. can you uh, maybe sing something yeah. like a short song? Um, uh, maybe I could. Uh, Woo! Yes, 
<laughs> I didn't say a word. I said I could. Oh. There is a difference. <laughs> Semantically, that's just a, a gigolo, and everywhere I go, people know the price I'm paying. <laughs> Pay for every dance. Selling each romance. Ah. Bam. <laughs> what to say? And what to say on this beautiful day when the sun is up? Woo! My heart is uh, June or May yeah. or uh, August or September. The sun is coming down. <laughs> All the Woo! seasons gather around in this blissful sound of bam bow. <laughs> Speaking of seasons, I think that uh, I, I've been told that the fall is coming. I'm, uh, I'm they, hearing that. I'm hearing that. I heard it already yeah. came. It's already here. It's kind of chilly. It kind of feels. It kind of feels like you today. It's kind of kind of feels chilly. Yeah, yeah a little crisp. So this is the chilly. Extra chilly crisp. Show. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> chilly chill show don't end, because <laughs> it's chilly chill and friends show. And see, I chilly, I chill. Everybody else is my friends. So if I'm not here, uh, my friends are. <laughs> okay, that works. Yeah. <laughs> Say, uh, Julie, mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm like, I'm, I'm working on being a didgeridoo. Okay. You think uh, I can come to a show? And if you can master the didgeridoo, I absolutely would love to have you well, on the show. I don't want to have actually do the didgeridoo. I've got I a didgeridoo. Do. You got one? <laughs> do you have one actually? I've got one. No, they're not expensive. Oh, let me go say hi. You guys, uh, it, it hold down the fort. Um, so, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, um, uh, entertain yourself in the world. Okay, I'm, I'm here a little early. I was scheduled to be here at one, but I thought I would chill with the chilly chill people while there was is an empty. The, is that when your show is, when is your show normally on? Normally, my show is on Wednesday nights between 8 and 10 o'clock. Nice. So, are, are you part of the chilly chill team, or are you just dropping in today? Uh, I, I, I. I'm Chili Chill's friend, and I, I stop by the show every once in a while. Ah, yes, yes. That's the one thing I really like about the station, is because we're right in that window. Like, our neighbors and friends will, will go to the fuel and have coffee, and they'll walk by, they're like, oh, Julie's here! And they'll yeah, stop yeah. in, and, you know, we'll be talking about music, because that's our show. And, you know, they'll put their two cents in, or our, I'm in a band with Freddie Lee, and Freddie will be just walking around, and you'll see us and stop by, and come on in, sit down, put the headphones on, start talking about music. It's pretty fun. Spontaneous. Spontaneous, definitely. I'm going to have a little script every week, but I'm really okay about going off script. So, Eric, we got to get you on the show. Um, Every week we have a guest. We have a panel of four individuals, myself included, that always come on the show to talk about stuff. But the second hour we always devote to the music of a guest. So, yes. since you are already part of the River West Radio team, you should definitely come on the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I can get you, um, Should I give you my phone number? Yeah, yeah. Okay. An email address, maybe. Okay, okay well, um, uh, let's see. I think I got a pen. While you're getting the pen out, I'm going to... Uh, bring up the whole fundraiser thing that's coming up so that's a fundraiser coming up yeah oh yeah. For, for the for, for river for, west radio nice we need stuff we need stuff what kind of you stuff? know well the stuff we need like when we come into the show we bring our own extra microphones and cables and we bring in headphones some of the stuff that I brought in, I've kind of left there for people to keep using, but I need to take some of it back because I use it for my recording studio and for my own music stuff. So we need to get more microphones and we need to get cables. And right now we're using kind of a jury rigged sort of headset, headphone setup. It's just a little, little uh, octopus kind of like eight input, tiny little hub. And it works okay, but really it would be nice if we could have just a headphone unit where we could individually um, control, each person could individually control how loud their headphones are, etc. So there's just a lot of things that River West Radio needs. And then one of the biggest things that we need to do is start paying one of our 
technicians because he's there tirelessly, tirelessly working every night. Oh, yeah. Nick. Nick, yeah, yeah constant, he's awesome. Constant work. Without him, this just would not be happening. And right. he's doing it all for free, and which is ridiculous. The person has yeah, to eat, you know. Guy's got to eat. So we really need to raise some, some funds to get him to... Uh, Get him, get him afloat, basically. So we're hoping that this this fundraiser that's happening on September 28th at uh, Lineman's will bring in some funds for all those things that I just mentioned. And if uh, people are interested, they can go on Facebook because we have an event created on Facebook for the River West Radio Benefit Fundraiser. So. And Eric is handing me his phone number and his email and his information so that I can get him on the show. Are, are you playing at the fundraiser? No. No. Okay. I was not sure because we have a cavalcade of people oh, really? performing. That's yeah. going to be on the 28th? That's going to be on the 28th. Nice. Uh, the band that uh, Jacob, my... What day of the week is that? That is a Friday. Oh, nice. The band that uh, Jacob and Emily, who are on my... Hi, guys! Ah, friends friends from the neighborhood. Uh, yeah. Jacob and Emily are on, on my panel, and we all play in a band with Freddie Lee. And we're waving Whoa. to some peeps. We're waving to some peeps. Oh, there's a nice dog out there. Lots of dogs today. Did you see that dog that looked like a Muppet? He was adorable. Like this big, huge poodle. Is that him? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is him. He, he is come. just absolutely Here adorable. Here comes the dog. OMG, yeah, it's radio, dog so radio? you can't see how cute he is, so we'll just have to describe how cute he is. How's life? OMG. <laughs> so cute. He's like a really, he's like a big poodle. He kind of looks like a Muppet. He's just adorable, and he's got a salt yeah, and pepper. He's great. And friendly. And he's wagging his tail. Aww. So if, if wagging a tail could be translated to radio, what would it sound like? Whoosh. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ian. Ian's going to be playing at the Benefit. Oh, yeah. Ian's going to play to his banjo at the Benefit, yes? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I thought we Maybe were firm on that. I thought, I thought this was the Chili Chill Show. Well, it is. I kind of... Or the, or the well, it's compose yourself now. We just way. kind of sort of transitioned okay. over. <laughs> There's no clear boundaries but between the shows. I, I really don't think we should have any boundaries today. Kind of like. Yeah. No, you're, you're. I think it should be organically, you know, amorphous. Yeah. Is it the chili chill show? Is it, it? compose yourself? <laughs> Ian's here. It could be something else. Yeah. Well, if you didn't go into the store and stop the broadcast and restart it, then you are. You're all just Center Street days. I, I'm still chilly till then. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> We're still broadcasting yeah. the whole day, though, right? Yeah, the whole day right, is right, just right. on. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. What normally, what shows do they usually, they don't even have shows at this time in the afternoon usually. No. they don't open till three. I'm, oh, you're right. You're right. So this is kind of unusual for the. Yeah, for, they wouldn't normally be broadcasting this early. Don't they yeah. um, rerun old shows when they're not? I thought that Nick set it up no, to rerun. No, well, maybe. Most of the time. You can the internet. You can, yeah. They play music like after 11, after the store closes. I've noticed they just play like music and really like good local music. I've heard some really great music on there that I know must be local because it's like the Milwaukee Blues, you know. Yeah. And but they never announce who it is. There's no mm. announcer saying, and that was. Oh. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to know who just who just did that song. So right, they, right. They they play a good collection of local music um, after radio hours, but you won't know who it is. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to have to connect up with that because that's what my whole show is about, local music. So if you're listening to this yeah. and you are a local musician, by all means, please try to uh, contact me yeah. at truejewels at yahoo.com or just look for the River West Radio show, Compose Yourself, and I'm always looking for guests. Yeah, and Zav is, Zav is really looking for something to play after hours that would be more like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the song you just listened to was this, and... You know, so right, right. Yeah, so there's, there's. I mean, there's, there's so many gaps and holes and things for people to do mm -hmm. with this radio thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it wouldn't be that hard to, to, for, for somebody to like uh, pre-record uh, 
so they don't have to be here at night. No, well, no, you could pre-record. Mm-hmm. You could have the song, then pre-record the opening and say, and so, now, yeah, yeah you could because re- it's like twelve. It's like twelve. No, it's like twenty. Twenty. Uh, help me out. Sixteen. It's sixteen hours. There's there's some sort of thing though that that we need to, to fill. play music like because they don't want to pay the copyright thing or it, yeah, no, it has to be all local music that you have permission to play. Yeah, because. I, I, there are eventually I'm sure it would be wonderful once we get this thing really off the ground to pay the royalties to ASCAP BMI but yeah. right now I don't think so you don't think we should do that? no I, I don't because I think that uh, this would make this radio station more like um, every other radio oh, station I see your point and I see your point because this is so pure Pure well, and local like and individual. I think, yeah, you know what? I think I'd like to take Just, his point yeah. and my point and put them together. I agree with you a whole, like, 100% Chile. Totally yeah. agree with you. Well, except, we don't need Hollywood. We don't need Warner If we paid ASCAP BMI, then all of the... Well, see, all the local people then would get credit for being... For being played. This is Jake. Jacob just is in the house. Jacob's from my show, Compose Yourself. And this is Eric and Chili and you know Ian. Ian just left. But we're, we're, we're doing very informal kind of freestyling, amorphous shows. So we, we discussed earlier, it doesn't really matter whose show it is at this point. So. Yeah. Well, since you have your mouth full of food, then we'll talk for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, I'd like to introduce Jacob Mushin. He is on my panel, my trusty companion and friend and bass player and fellow panelist on the show. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing all right. I think you missed the go-kart races. I did miss the go-kart races. I caught the very, very, very end of them. That's about it. We moved here a year ago. Yeah, almost exactly a year ago. Almost exactly a year ago. And this was like one of the first things within the first week that we moved into uh, the Jazz Gallery space. We had this wonderful little festival. And I thought, boy, it really feels good to be home again, because I'd lived in River West most of my adult life and had to go away for various reasons for a while. And so coming back felt really good. So last year, though, we were kind of a little disorganized because we had just moved and our stuff wasn't all unpacked and it was just not quite organized. And there was a couple other things going on that day. So uh, just from west side of Milwaukee, I just had to move. I was living on the east side. And he was living in Shorewood, but. Um, we missed the go-kart races last year. Yep, we did. We, we did totally did. Select the room. And so this year, I set my alarm for 1130. Even though we had a really late show last night, we were up until 5 in the morning with gear and loading gear and then trying right. to wind down. Uh, we played at um, the Why Not 3 last night. Um, where's that? That Why Not 3 is on Kenilworth right by Beans of Barley. Oh, okay. So, you know, it, it's one of these things where you load all this gear, and then we had to drop off the van. And yes, I wasn't imagining things. Your mom really did need the van today. Oh, so uh, she actually tried to call me and didn't realize. She said, are you going to get the van back to us? And I said, March, it's right in front of your house. She said, it is? And I'm like, yup. <laughs> so she was really glad about that because she had an event to go to. So I wasn't imagining things. There you go. She really did need it back. But she... She generously let us use it for our gig, so. Indeed. But anyway, so I, I knew that I would have no sleep, and I knew it would be totally, totally worth it to set my alarm for 11.30 and watch the go-kart races that were taking place right in front of my house. And sure enough, they were absolutely hilarious. There was one go-kart that had a toilet on it, and dude dropped his pants. I mean, he had shorts on, but dude dropped his pants, and they're, they're going down the street with the go-kart. With him on the toilet, they lost. <laughs> Naturally. Who were the big winners? The green, uh, what were they called? The green, what were they called? The go-kart team that uh, won? Go, go-karts. Yay, winners. Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> no, no, no. Eric, it was great to meet you. I'm going to give you a call, get you on the show. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Great. Awesome. You take it off? Yeah, I gotta go deliver uh, some face paint. I gotta go deliver some face paint for um, the fairy godmother. The fairy godmother needs face paint. 
Godspeed, man. Go, oh, yeah. go. Thank Run you. like the wind. You guys enjoy. <laughs> Good Thank to you. see you. Take care, man. <laughs> so, uh, while Chili Chill is delivering face paint, uh, Jacob and I are just here, and we usually have a script, but I knew we weren't going to be able to play music today, so I figured we'd just kind of banter a little bit and see if we can't get people walking down the street to come in and talk with us and explain the show. But yeah, the go-kart races. So I, th I believe it was a team, and I want to say it was from the Children's Outing Association, but I'm not exactly sure. But there was a team of young people, like teenagers, um, the green team, some type of green. Green was involved in the name. <laughs> but they, they was cute. They had like a canoe sort of thing. And they just like beat the, the poop out of everyone. <laughs> they just like tore it up. So and, they won. Uh, and they uh, were, uh, by green you mean environmental or it was I just think green in color? Or? I, actually, I think it was kind of supposed to maybe be a little both. I mean, they were wearing green t-shirts and they had green like um, fly wings, like flies, like okay. little, you know, or I wouldn't say fairy wings. They looked more like bug wings, but they were cute. It was very cute. And uh, then there was one, this was awesome. They had a go-kart that was shaped like a little stage, and they had a professional belly dancer on the go-kart, belly dancing while they were trying to push push this down the, the street. I was gonna say, wouldn't that add a little bit <laughs> extra weight? Doesn't that seem a little uh, counterproductive? I think that they were going for flash, Maybe and they not were, speed. Th they may have been trying to distract some of the uh, the ah, other teams. Yeah, that's a strategy. Now that is a strategy. I never uh, thought of that. Yeah, I never thought of that one either. Yeah, that's an angle. That you can't do that in NASCAR. Angle. They're driving too fast. <laughs> Somebody strapped a belly dancer to the back of the NASCAR. I think that that definitely would uh, have an effect on the race. Yes, indeed. <laughs> So that, that was another notable one, and I'm trying to think, oh, there was one go-kart made entirely of empty Captain Morgan's bottles. Um, what, was that go-kart really, like, swerving the entire race, <laughs> or? <laughs> no, <laughs> but the people operating the go-kart really worked hard to make that happen. <laughs> I'm sure they did. They must have, that must have been unbearable work. <laughs> Uh, the River West Artists Association, who sponsors uh, Center Street Days, of which I'm a member. I don't know, Jacob, if you ever became a member, but I'm a member. Um, they sponsor the event, and they have a, a go-kart every year called The Losers. So the dude from Dr. Chow's medicine show, he was the uh, announcer for the go-kart races, and he put the megaphone in front of the driver of the losers go-kart and said, what, what do you think is going to happen here? And he goes, we're going to lose. Yeah, of course. And, and I don't know, he must have been prescient or, you know, could see into the future because guess what? He had a premonition, you know. He had a premonition and you know something, they, they actually did lose. I know. That's, that's crazy. Oh, and you know what? Amazing. This happens every year, I'm told. I, that's impressive. How is that possible? That's a streak. Like constantly predicting you're going to lose and then it happens. Every I, time. I, yeah, you know, I, I just I wonder maybe if they predicted they were going to win, if they would win. <laughs> I think if they predicted they were going to win, they would have to make some effort, and that'd be a big problem. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so yeah, and and there were you know there were a couple that were really cute. You know, a kid dressed up as a little Viking that was really adorable, and just uh, it was fun. So it was definitely definitely worth walking the two and a half feet off of our doorstep with my cup of coffee that I warmed up from yesterday's coffee. <laughs> hey, you know, if it's good coffee, you can get away with that. That's right, as long as it uh, hasn't, it's been kept, you know, cool. Then so I went and I made a pot of coffee for you because I figured, you know, we were going to do this, so you probably would need some. And I, I went and I looked and Shazam, you weren't there. <laughs> yep, I teleported away. You teleported away. You, you, you snuck past me when I was watching. Now we must have just missed each other. Yeah. So, uh, yep, so we are uh, broadcasting live from Center Street Days. 
this is not ordinarily a time when River West Radio is broadcasting because the hours for broadcasting are 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. I think 3.30. Is it 3.30? I think that's usually what they do. Ah. And our show, Compose Yourself, is usually broadcast on Wednesdays between 8 and 10 o'clock. But we are here today, and I kind of wish that we could get some people to just kind of drop by. I don't know, Jacob, maybe you should just stand over there and look cute. Maybe somebody will <laughs> want to come in. This is a radio show, though. People yeah, I know, it's, to... there's no visuals. You, you wouldn't be able to see he was standing there looking cute. So. That's right. So I guess we'll just have to kind of wave our arms and maybe hope somebody stops by. But at any rate, this, is, this has been a blast so far, and it's like right at the beginning of the day, so there's lots of stuff to come. Oh, yeah. So, uh, weather's starting to get a little bit nicer. It's warming up. The sun actually just came out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love this time of the year because there's that, just that little bit of a nip in the air, and I like wearing jackets. I like having long sleeves, and I like wearing jackets. And we've got some uh, friends from the neighborhood kind of dropping by. How are you doing? Now, you, you have your own show. Uh, tell us about it. Oh, <laughs> OK. Uh, it's called Three Words. And it broadcasts um, live every Saturday at 5 PM. And I have. Uh, Tell us who you are. Oh, Eliza Brooks. Eliza Brooks. Yeah. And I do interviews, I play music, and uh, I do what's called an interlude, which is going through the archives of uh, the Library of Congress and uh, uh, the domains, um, free domain, yeah. and looking for important speeches and music and poetry and just wow. kind of an eclectic kind of show yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah so in between the interviews I play that <laughs> that is really neat you know and that's a really creative way to get around the limitations that we have we do we have some limitations but there's a plethora of wonderful um, gems in the archives that is for free uh, anyone can use it listen to it um, wonderful stuff uh, from John Kennedy's speeches to LBJ's phone calls. <laughs> Can you give me an example of one of your favorite finds? I'm sorry, what am I one of your favorite finds? Oh, uh, well, the LBJ was a great one. That was where he was on the telephone talking to um, one of the uh, employees, actually the son of Hager Shirts, and he was ordering some clothes and what he needed for the funeral of John F. Kennedy. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was a really interesting listening to him speak and talk about how he needed enough room in the crotch for his pants and, you know, <laughs> how many color, what kind of color shirts. And it was quite humorous because it's, well, LBJ was just quite a character. Yeah, he was. I remember reading a, uh, a report written by one of the guys who was working at, for the Secret Service during LBJ's presidency about how at one point during his service uh, they were standing outside of Air Force One and he noticed that uh, LBJ had been st began urinating on his shoes and he pointed it out to him and LBJ said, I know, and just continued. And that was... Uh, yeah, he was wow, something. I didn't know he was that eccentric. Oh, very, very much so. And, and after he, you know, after he decided not to run, and uh, left the presidency, he let his hair grow, you know, and really? oh, real long. And yeah, who would let their hair grow? He looked like uh, <laughs> kind of like uh, Willie Nelson in the end, you know, it's it really interesting. And, and I think a lot of that had to do with, you know, how he was trying to relate to the, the student protesters at the time. But uh, he was a he was an Willie Nelson had a different way of relating to the student protesters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if uh, if uh, LBJ you know, toked up, but <laughs> uh, he was uh, very interesting, very, uh, he suffered internally quite a bit, you wow. know, from the mental anguish. We've got a guest from the neighborhood. Hi. Hi. Hello. And your name is? Jim. Jim. What brings you here today? You live around here, people? My son owns a bar. Which one? Foundation. Oh, your son is Char Charles? No, no, Donnie. 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 He doesn't own it. Uh, 
Donnie. Right, 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 right. Donnie and Charles and one other guy. John. John. Yeah. Yep, owns the foundation. Where's so that is uh, the, the, it's the Tiki Bar right Bremen. by. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on Bremen, what, between Center and Hadley? Yeah, I love that place. Yeah. It's always a fun place to stop in. This is uh, yeah. internet radio, and uh, we do live shows throughout the week. And Brooks has a show, I have a show, and we're just kind of promoting that today by hanging out and trying to talk to people from the neighborhood. I know, I know, that's why I keep trying to do this. You know, I, I keep trying to motion and try to you know, get people in here. What do you have there? Pugs are us. <laughs> we, we, we now have a bumper sticker that says Pugs are us. Awesome. That's really awesome. If you see anybody with a pug, that's what I do. I just give them a pug. Ah. Hug a pug. Do you make the signs yourself? Yeah. That's my business. Where is your business at? My truck. You see that funny truck parked in front of the foundation? No, but I'll look later. Oh, yeah. That's your truck with a house on it? Yeah, that's my mobile sign shop. He's... So Jim, Jim has a mobile sign shop in a truck that's shaped like a house. That's pretty cool. A pirate ship. A pirate ship. You know, oh, I okay, have seen yeah. that. I, I have I seen told, that. I saw that earlier yeah. today. Some signs for us here at Radio. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah, that we'll have to. Great. That would be so cool. Yeah, we definitely could use some signs for River West Radio. We are having a benefit show in a couple weeks at Linneman's to try to raise money for the radio station. And um, we could probably use some signage for that. We could advertise your business a little bit that way. I'm going to uh, get a pen out so we can get Jim's information about uh, his sign company for our Jim Signs. It's, oh, it's right on there. Jim's. Well, you have a... He, he get, you get James signs. Oh, and he's got a car too. Yeah. So. That's the website. Gypsy so the website. Tell website. tell us what the website is. It says Gypsy Trailers USA. G Y P S Y T R A I L E R S USA dot com. And yeah, very nice. So you Beautiful. you design and build these yeah. wagons. That's really fantastic. I've seen it. It's so great to put a face to the thing that I've seen a million times. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. seen it around the neighborhood a whole bunch of times, too. Do you want me to write on the back of this? Or can well, I just keep that? Uh, so, uh, yeah. we, we are broadcasting from the teepee. I think a lot of River Westerners oh, yeah. are familiar with yeah, the teepee that was next to the public house for a while during the Occupy, the Occupy River, River West. West. Yeah. So, the tiki, tiki, the tipi was a fixture for a while in that movement, but I didn't know that the River West um, film and video people were the the owners or guardians of this tipi, but they do. They keep it in, in back there. Yeah, I didn't know that either, but this is a pretty cool tipi. It is a really awesome tipi. You know, it looks authentic, too, because... You can start, you can have a fire going in the middle of a teepee, and I see that the top of the teepee looks like it's it, kind of been smoked out a little bit. Like It looks authentic, but I have a feeling the Native Americans never worked for www.tp.com. They probably didn't, and where, where, where are you seeing that? <laughs> no, hey, you don't know, that could be a Native American business. Yeah, who knows? You don't know that, we don't know that. Where are you guys located? Uh, the film and video store. We uh, we do normally broadcast from the film and video store, which is, by the way, an awesome business in it, in and of itself. I mean, yeah, you can really find is. anything. Yep, I've rented horror movies and comedies and music. I've got some uh, some live Led Zeppelin performances rented right now. I yeah, mean, we got to watch that. Yeah, I got to watch through that again. It's yeah, they've got comedy and all kinds of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, well, you know, I was uh, walking up and down Center Street days today, and um, over on, uh, I think it's uh, Pierce. Yeah, Pierce and uh, Center. 
there's a stage there, and they gave me a list of their uh, shows today. Very good. Um, so it's uh, right now, well, they're ra- Ways and Means. They were just playing, so I think they're wrapping up right now. And then I think it's S. Crime or S. Crim Shaw? Scrim Shaw. Oh, Scrim Shaw. Okay. <laughs> they're at 2 o'clock. And Lack of Reason is at 2.45. <laughs> So, and then I think that's Floor Model. These are very clever names. I love that. 3.30. Oh, yeah. So if you know any of these bands, you want to come listen to them. They're performing free right outside the, um, uh, I can't remember the name. Quarters? Uh, the, the new bar. The, the Apollo bar. Lounge. Uh, oh, the uh, Apollo Lounge. Impala, that's yeah. George's gig. That's yeah. uh, George Morales from... Uh, um, Corazon? Yes. He and his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. Opened they're, that they're, now. they're sponsoring that stage today. So um, the bar's open and they have a lot of refreshing uh, beverages. Um, and then, let's see, I read this right. Also, and, Bicentennial And they have air Rub. conditioning. Uh, and they have air conditioning. And they have air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. But, right, you know, actually, it's pretty nice today. It's getting a little warm. Yeah. But, um, you know, when the clouds go over, it cools down. Um, also, then at 4.15, Bicentennial Rub. 5 o'clock is Hearts of Stone. And 6 o'clock is Dr. Chow's Love, Love Machine. Medicine. All right, yeah. yeah. And Dr. Then, oh, Dr. Chow was the, uh, was the uh, uh, person who commentated and uh, was the broadcaster for the go-kart races. So. Oh, okay, okay. Terrific, yeah. So you want to come down to the... Uh, Center Street Days and uh, check out that uh, the venue there over on Pearson Center and then all the way at the far end closer to Holton there's a rap stage and a reggae stage and all kinds of great music over there and um, I heard a New Orleans style brass band over by uh, by Humboldt over oh, by over the by Uptowner Humboldt, yeah. I think that's I, I haven't gotten that far yet and I'm just making my way and yeah, they were. <laughs> I thought I'd read it oh, on the radio. Oh, that was very useful. Yeah. Because, yeah. I, yeah, I didn't see so the lineup. So we'll leave this here so we can update yeah, this. Yeah, That's yeah. a good idea. And the, whoever's sitting here broadcasting can yeah. read that again. <laughs> so awesome. I'll leave this here. Yeah, I'll leave this pen, too. Awesome. So we will. We will. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, you're welcome. And hug a pug. Hug a pug. <laughs> Pugs are us. <laughs> See, this is what I love about being back home again, because the people in this neighborhood are really, truly, authentically themselves. I mean, obviously, you know, it sounds very general to say the people, every single one of them. But, I mean, it's just, you meet some really interesting people, and people who are doing things that are uniquely their own thing, like the guy who builds, like, pirate houses on the back of a truck. I mean, that's just really cool. And then there's the guy who builds the custom bikes. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. And there's uh, all sorts of visual artists. You know, there's four galleries. There's musicians everywhere. Yeah, and there's, like, there's a lot of um, drive-by and stealth art that goes on. It's like, for a while there, these little alien eyes were popping up all over River West. And there's still a few of them. One, I saw one on a uh, street sign a week or two ago. There was one on the side of the building we're living in, but that got taken off. But Yeah, I was disappointed. I really thought, I, I, I became fond of it, and suddenly it was gone. And we've got some more neighborhood people. Come on in. Come on in. Talk on the show. They're shy. They don't want to come in. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool in this, in this teepee. I really like it. I could yeah. very much see how this would be fun to camp with. Oh, yeah. I mean, it really is authentic looking in the sense that yeah. it really is pieces of tree and I think this is canvas. Yeah, I mean this still is a real TV. It just it was is made, made by very TV's like TV.com but hey, that's not a bad thing. Very interesting. So anyways, people were asking me about Compose Yourself and we were talking last night trying to explain to people what the show is about and mostly we try to mix up and make things very eclectic. And 
People are very surprised at the way that I program each show because I purposely put things that shouldn't ever be in the same show together, <laughs> like heavy metal and country and serious classical music and hip hop and just you name it, and uh, it's then, all in one show. Then a prog rock tune, then a jazz song, etc. Yeah, and you know what we try to sort of promote on the show is actually really actively listening to music. I get frustrated sometimes because people put on music kind of in the same way they burn incense. It's supposed to be some kind of a accoutrement or a background thing or something that adds, you know, atmosphere or mood. But they don't really actively listen to what is what is there. Well, a lot of people don't know what to listen for. Well, and so on our show, we kind of try to, first of all, promote the idea of active listening because when we put a song on, we don't talk over the song. We listen. We listen to the song. And then we talk about it after it's over. Yeah. And we listen for things. And I think that hoping, I'm hoping anyways, that the show helps people to have a better understanding of what to listen for in music. Now, that's not to say that music can't be something that's fun and in the background. I mean, I don't want to be a snob either. Sometimes I just put something on that I'm familiar with that I've heard before and I'm not sitting and actively listening to it. It's just there because it's energizing me or I'm just kind of doing something else, but... Yeah. I, mean. I just think that a lot of people never stop to, to put music in a different mode. You know, to take it out of that, I'm just putting it in the background mode and to put it in the foreground and really appreciate it as a piece of art and what, you know, what it, what it is, what the intention of the composer, songwriter is and what they're trying to say. Well, with the majority of the music on the quote-unquote real radio stations, I mean, what's the point of active listening at this point? Well, and that brings me to another subject. I mean... Music for entertainment is sometimes not as challenging or not as complex or not or, or or is quite predictable because it is intending to serve the function of simply being there for accoutrement. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Hey Sleepy's here. How you doing guys? Good to see you. Yo. Good to see you too. We're talking about how the how our show we like to play lots of different kinds of music. Yeah. You've kind of sat and listened to our show before. Yes, yeah, outside the building. Yeah. Yeah. But you never heard my show, though. I haven't yet. What's your show? Sleepy Show. Sleepy Talk Show. Talk about anything, everything. Anything and everything, yeah. What time is your show broadcasting? Um, Mondays from 9 to 10 p.m. Then I picked up a Thursday for Thursday 7 to 8. Mm -hmm. So is it just you, or do you have guests every week? Um, it's me, but I have people come in, come in, play, or talk, whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, the idea is he just kind of goes with the flow. He he just m makes the hour happen. Yep. <laughs> I had one caller on Monday. They said they like my show and they want to smoke a blunt with me. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. That's River West Radio that's for you. That's River West yeah. Radio for you. <laughs> and he, and they said I ain't putting them to sleep. I'm keeping them awake. There you go. Uh -huh. That's good. That's the wakey good. show instead of the sleepy show? Yeah, wakey show. <laughs> <laughs> so but you yeah. picked up a Thursday night, night yeah, show. Yeah, okay. Thursday. Because I was like, that one day, that's not hidden. I can't wait another week. I got to do it at least two days out of a week. Hey, man, that's <laughs> good for you and good for that, the station. It's yeah, I'm like, I need more air time to help the station build more, you know? Well, yeah, and if you can actually fill up the hour and keep it where people are interested, then... Oh, a lot of people are interested. Yeah. Just oh, like I know. your I, show. I, I walked past uh, during your show, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, and, I mean, it's, it's interesting. You guys just are seriously, that's an, its own art of improvisation, doing a radio show without a script, without any necessarily idea what you're talking about outside, or what you're planning on talking about, I should yeah, say. Yeah, it is tight. Like, y'all need to make, make an appearance on mine and bring some instruments. Uh, we can. I I just uh, I'd, I'd have to find an acoustic instrument. I, I don't think they'd appreciate an electric instrument in the studio. Yeah, if that's true. If you brought your little bass amp though and turned it way down, that could work. 
Yeah. We, we could do that. We could try to bring in some instruments and play some. We'd have to go to the other side where the piano is so I could play piano. Oh, that would be nice. I'll let you sit on my side, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've got some guests here from the neighborhood. You want to come in and say wanna, a few things on the radio? Safe? Okay. What's uh, your name? Maggie. Maggie? Do you live in River West here, or did you come to visit? Hi, Hello. Maggie, and what's your name? It's, it's actually Maddie. Maddie. Yeah, she said it's said it, uh, quiet. It's a little noisy in here. We what, can hear all the background. Where do we live, huh? Brady Street. Brady Street. Yeah. Brady, Brady Street. Brady Street. Okay. Awesome. We're right in the neighborhood, Brady Street. I lived on right off of Brady Street on Franklin for a little while. Oh, okay. Yeah, we live on Pearson. Ah, so, yeah. that's a fun awesome. neighborhood. Yeah, we like it. Mm -hmm. This is nice in the teepee, right, Manny? Is this a cool teepee? It, like, really, we were talking about how it looks really real. Yeah, it does. And even though it was made by www.teepee.com, <laughs> but we don't know. This could be a Native American business. Could be. We don't know that. It's it could possible. Be. Hard to tell. It's nice and cool in here, too. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. It is. it's very pleasant. You know, it's a lot bigger in here than I expected it to yes. be. It's yeah. deceptive. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm I'll be right back. Keep talking, though, Manny. Be right back. Get... So, uh, do you go to school in, in the neighborhood that you live in? Where do you go to school? You got to talk into the microphone, though, so we can hear your answers. Have to talk right in the Woodlands. microphone. Woodlands. Ah, Woodlands, you said. Mm-hmm. So what, what grade? Fourth grade. grade. Uh, I remember fourth grade. <laughs> fourth grade was awesome. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. In I retrospect. I do not remember fourth grade. <laughs> I think I Maddie's getting left. shy. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get my son to come in here. I got to text him or call him. So, uh, Sleepy's show is on Mondays and Thursdays. Compose Yourself, our show is on Wednesdays. There's a lot of great stuff. And you know what? There are shows that I haven't gotten to really explore yet. I listened to a couple of Ingrid's shows. Um, I don't remember the name of her show. Do you remember the name of her show? I think it's Ingrid's Inspirational Hour. Uh, yeah, I, I heard that one. That was that was interesting. But I, I really like Jilly's show, actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, he does a really good job. He's, he's radical, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and then there's Mike's show, um, the news show. The breaking down the news. Breaking down the news. Sounds good. Uh, I, I always got a, I've gotten a kick out of uh, well, as far as breaking down the news, they do a really good job because they these shoots for really underground stories. Right. Trying to go for stuff that wouldn't have been reported in the mainstream <laughs> media that he thinks are actually deserving of some airtime. Yeah, definitely. Want to come in and talk? We've got some more people from the neighborhood. Maybe we can get them to come in and talk. The teepee is really cool, but yeah, it is. people don't realize what we're doing in here, so we're kind of trying to lure people in, like going, hey, we're over here, we're in a teepee, and we're It's nice and cool in here, though, because nice out cool. there is too sunny. It yeah. is. Yeah. The sun finally came out, and now it's starting to get hot. I like this but time of year, though. I've uh, I've caught a number of the of the River West radio shows. I've just been trying to listen to at least one episode of different people's shows to to see what everyone's doing because mm -hmm. it is still relatively new and there's been a decent amount of turnover of shows. But I I caught a few of them that I really thought were cool. I thought the uh, I caught an episode of Stone Soup that was really uh, that was really well done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually, being a sports fan, I really like the Packerverse show. Just listening oh. to him rant about the Green Bay Packers, you know, that's... I think that, it's our alderman, Nick. Yeah, so that is, that's, uh, yeah, I just get a kick out of that. I'm, uh, I, I'm already, uh, I'm pretty hyped for tomorrow, so... Tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Packer game. Oh, Packer game, yeah. Okay, well... I'll be doing something else. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> you're going to figure out where you're going to watch it since we don't have a television. I already know. Same All here. Right then. Yep, not a big Packer fan, but, I mean, it's not that I'm not, a, okay, whoa, I don't want to get assassinated on the way yeah. back to my apartment here. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a sports fan. I have one thing to say about the Packers, though. I am proud of the fact that Wisconsin has the only team that is actually owned by the city that they they reside in, which I think is right. that's the way it always was supposed to be. How we can have you a young guest coming really in to team, talk. You know? Right. 
So I think that's pretty awesome about the Packers. Right, but only people from Green Bay can actually say it's our team. Yeah, but we can say Wisconsinites own the team, and we're but, all I mean, Wisconsinites. It started as the Meat Packers. That, that those were the people who owned the team. Right. Yep. Y'all come in and talk. Uh, Do you yeah, want to say so? We got some. We've got a guest from the neighborhood. What's your name, or, honey? Or if you even. Ayana. Ayana. Is that right? Did I say it right? And uh, so you're walking around today. Is that your friend or your brother? Yeah. You want to come in and say hi? Tell us your name. Hi, everybody. Hi. You're on the radio now. What do you yeah. think? Isn't that fun? This is on the radio. This is on the radio. And what's oh, your I name? Sing a little song. But you got to. But Can you got to sing say a little song? The microphone. You got to come in the microphone. Terrence Spinks Jr. Terrence, and you're gonna sing us a song? Oh my goodness, this uh, is a treat. We have a live performance. Go for it. He's getting comfortable, like a professional should. All right. We can turn this, put this microphone down a little bit for you. There you Thank go. You. Hit it. Uh, this is a radio station. We're broadcasting on the radio we, right now. We have we we pinned it on the radio. Yes. Yeah, it's on the radio. So are you ready to sing us a song? Sure. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Uh, I'm really scared to do it, but... You don't have to be scared. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Just think of a song to sing. Do you sing a song in school that you like? Huh? Do you sing any songs at school that you like? No, actually, I sing, like, Cheetah Girls or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. You ready? Elsie, help me out, right? Come on. Terrence doesn't want to sing. <laughs> no. You, you, can, you can have a microphone if you want, Terrence. <sighs> you can sing whatever you want as long as there's no bad words in the song. Elsie. <laughs> Terrence doesn't want to sing. Okay. Ma 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 No one can hold us back when we set to go go No one can tell us now when we're ready to ready to flow flow Lead by example hear the sample on the flow Then I move a little harder I'll get to the Oh I'm done <laughs> That, that, that was great. Uh, Live performances on the radio. Hey, we've got some more neighborhood people. Come on in. We got room. We are having live okay. vocal See performances ya. here. Uh, make sure you call me. Yeah. My <laughs> okay, my number is 852-4299. Uh, okay? All right. Bye. See ya. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for the performance. Wait, wait, I See you. <laughs> this is totally a fun festival. That was great. We got a live performer on an impromptu event. You know. Yeah, can't beat that. Yeah, that's. We have trouble scheduling live performers sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Although, if anybody's listening and they're interested, or they know somebody who might be interested in performing on our show, that would be awesome because we do have some guests lined up. Next week, we're going to have Kevin Hayden who's a jazz drummer and composer. Awesome dude. Um, we're gonna have Liv Miller in a couple weeks. She has a, been a friend of mine for a number of years. She played in one of my brother's bands. My brother is Dan Najako, and he's played in quite a few Milwaukee bands, prolific Milwaukee bands. Right now he's in a band called Cedars and Stars, and also another band called Slander Cannon. And um, actually, I'm going to procure some of that music to play on our show very, very soon. That's since cool. Since we haven't played any when of When can I be a guest music. on your show? Pardon me? When can I be a guest on your show? Of course. You just have yeah. to have some music, some original music. Do you no, have I any don't have music. music. I can just talk. If well, if you talk. want to come be a panelist on our show and talk about music, you can do that. To be, for, We try to have the guests be people who actually have their own music. Oh. But yeah, okay. a lot of times, like, Spencer has to work or Emily can't make it if we need a sub. And okay, you see, I we got that. an empty chair, you just come yeah, right in. Yeah, we don't have four panelists and a guest. We always are looking for guest panelists, too. Okay, cool. In I fact, keep that in mind. Um, on my 
Facebook page, which is just basically Julie Brandenburg on Facebook, um, one of our guests' husbands accompanied her to the radio show, and he's a filmmaker. So he filmed the experience that she had coming on the show. Nice. And uh, it's a really nice, it's very short, um, but it's, it's kind of a promotional film for her and her music. But it's very, very nice. Um, it's on my Facebook page. And, and it, it shows the the setup inside the video store, and it does give credit to the fact that it was all done on riverwestradio.com. And right. So it's a nice promotion for the station, a nice promotion for Denise. The, uh, the singer we're talking about is Denise Burton, and she's a singer and composer, former student of mine. But uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate in that many, many of my former students still keep in touch with me, and I still have a, a nice friendship with a lot of people who I had taught, and then because they're out there doing music on the music scene, they become my friend, and that's really neat. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I teach music. I teach uh, songwriting, uh, piano, and voice at MATC, and I also teach music composition at present for Present Music. They have a program for young composers, so I guide and coach young composers to work on contemporary classical music, which is really challenging um, for them and for me, but I'm just always very pleased with the results that these young people can... Because young people composing contemporary classical music, they're really willing to open up their minds and think outside the box. I mean, a lot of times they'll sit down and they'll start writing something very classical or something that sounds kind of Mozart or Beethoven, which is nice. There's nothing wrong with that. But then I kind of open their minds up to listen to things that are wider and outside the box and more contemporary, and they hear that and they're like, what's this? And then they really connect with that yep. and start getting real creative. Well, music is its own language. Any language you're going to do better with learning as a child than you are after growing up. It's just how it works. That is true. To an extent, I mean, I think that anybody at any age can keep their mind open. I just think that people, when they get older, they tend to kind of let everything sort of gel into one position. And I think people who I know who are my age or younger or older or whatever, but are not like young, young, like 21 young, that have kept their minds open and kept themselves open to moving forward in time and moving forward with the arts and with technology. My composition instructor is, I won't say his age, I don't want him to get mad at me, but he's considerably older than I am. And he keeps up on the latest music technology by continuing to you know, research and even take classes from the other instructors at, MA, uh, at UWM. And he constantly is composing for all sorts of different instruments. I saw a piece with, uh, it was written for a, a mandolin and a bayon, and it was just the most avant-garde uh, modern classical, or postmodern classical virtuosity I've seen played live ever. It was pretty unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. So... That's kind of what we sort of try to promote on our show, is to have people really get rid of preconceived ideas about what is music, what is art, and what is composition. And we were discussing earlier how we, we play everything from heavy metal to country to serious avant-garde classical music to pop music to hip-hop and whatever, because composition is composition, art is art. And it doesn't necessarily matter what flavor of, of composition it is if it's good it's good and so we try to get people to listen and judge something on its merits rather than oh I don't like this kind of music or I don't like that kind of music well it might not be your favorite kind of music but can you listen to it and say what was this artist trying to achieve and it hasn't reached me can I get something out of it so that's kind of where we're at and we're not just trying to flatter people we don't but at the same time, we're not going to point out what we don't like about the music. Mm -hmm. If we get a song on, we'll listen to it and say, oh, well, I liked this part because they did this interesting chord progression or this time signature change. 
Whereas if there's something that I don't care for so much, I mean, that's not my place to say. We're talking about the composition, not about if I liked it or not. That's a big, huge issue. The difference between taste and merit. You know what I mean? What, what is your name? Friar Otto. You're Friar Otto. Okay. Friar Otto. I do the, nice uh, to meet you. 10 to 11, Friar Otto's back porch. On okay. Awesome. 10 to 11, Friar, Friar Otto's back porch, and you are scheduled to perform at uh, the benefit concert. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be doing that, too. That's over at Linneman's, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to perform. October, is it? No, it's uh, September 28th. Oh, September 28th. Oh, thanks mm-hmm. for reminding me. <laughs> We've got flyers out here, too, that oh, you can so take. Oh, remind me, too. Yeah, yeah. September 28th. Yeah. So what uh, what types of things do you talk about and do on your show? Um, oh, since uh, it all depends on what I feel like getting into. Sometimes I don't do much talking at all. I just play. Uh, when I do singing, it's mainly uh, mainly just kind of like scat singing. You know, okay, that's since cool. Since I was the uh, the music minister at Harris Able with his client at Kirsch, I didn't get too much into the words, you know. So, are we talking like gospel scat singing or bebop scat singing or doo-wop scat singing? Uh, I mean, probably more like doo-wop, I would think. Somewhere like that, doo-wop, maybe. All right. And uh, it all depends on what uh, what piece I'm playing and what I feel like talking about. Uh, like sometimes I'll go on. Um, um, oh. Last time, I think I got into uh, talking about uh, how I'd like us, our country to go to a system of national referendums to decide everything at every government level, particularly wow. the federal level. That's a really because great idea. We are the people of this country, and now with this electronic age, which our forefathers could never Yeah, the Electoral have. College is a little antiquated now. Well, even, uh, even when you think of all the... Uh, Everybody knows there's graft and corruption in Washington, so I mean, I'm not going to pull any punches and try to dance around it. Right. And uh, they can keep up with doing all their kinds of things they want, but I think before they put any more burdens on the American people, they should ask the American people if they want this burden of this law or this procedure placed upon them. And since we are what the country and the government is supposed to be all about, right. how come we don't have the final say? How come there was not a national referendum taken when uh, the Bush administration decided uh, they had to uh, redraw the map of the Middle East and uh, go into Afghanistan and Iraq to try to draw the map of the Middle East the way uh, some people in power or pull the strings of power believe it should be? And why uh, why shouldn't we have a choice of where our tax money is being spent? Why should so much money be spent where people in Washington are re- our elected representatives, as soon as they get to Washington, I'm sorry, but they sell their votes to the to the, the highest bidder. Paid yep. lobbyists. What, yeah, I mean, when you talk about, think about it, I think the lobbyist is, system is just well, really screwed well, up. Well, let's just say the lobbyist system for what it is. It's just a it's a polite legal system of bribery. It is. I mean, when you really boil it down, that's all it really is. You pay for government access. You got enough money, you can buy the American military to to dismember any country that we think we can push over. Well, we can't pull it on the Russians or the Chinese, but we sure can pull it on the Afghanis and the Iraqis. Yep. And uh, oh, so I get uh, into uh, the, the national referendum thing is, uh, I think, is a way of cleaning that all up. They can play all their little games all they want over there. But before anything is done, the American people should vote on it. And that means informed people are going to have to vote maybe 20, 30, 40 times a year. But See, that's what scares me. I think people are lazy and they don't know the issues. Well, <laughs> they can't be any lazier or less informed on the issues than they are today. It's true. Maybe if you, if you did have to vote. Do you think that would inspire people to be more informed if they had that kind of If setting? you have to vote well, 40 times a year instead of four times a year, maybe you would be a little bit more interested in what's actually going on. Because re- electing somebody who you assume is going to represent every single one of your views properly is ridiculous. There's just exactly. no way. Especially in a two-party system. There's just, it's just well, not going to happen. Sure. And so uh, we, could, uh, we could cut through some of that stuff. And, I mean... Not everybody votes anyways. It's a minority of people that are choosing the leaders of our government the way it is. 
and there's more and more people that I meet that are disgusted and don't want to vote for anybody because they're all just a bunch of talking yep. heads pandering to their audience. They're just anti-politics. Uh, we have <laughs> we have, we have a couple of musical guests outside here. Uh, yeah. We'd like well, to so bring in. Get into those. <laughs> so you, you asked me what I talk about. Hey, we'll. Uh, no, no, I'm uh, really. I'm very after, interested. After after in the what music, we can get back into the politics. I'd love well, to. Well, that's okay. I don't have enough time to do that. But we don't need to make ourselves. All right, we've. Uh, mad either. No, no, no. Thanks a lot, though, Friar Otto, for your uh, yeah. perspective. Yeah. Thanks for the. We've got some musical guests, and I, you know what, I feel very bad, but there's another gentleman that's here from River West Radio and has his own show. Why don't you uh, give us your name really quick, because I forgot I met you at the uh, the last get-together. CC, yeah. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my name is CC, and part of me is life. So at two to four today, visit life my way, your way, our way. Have a nice day. Talk to you later. Talk to you later. All right, we uh, we have a what looks like a three-piece sort of washed-up style band. I see a oh, five-piece. We have five. And some dogs. Wow. All right, this is gonna be awesome. I see an accordion. I see a washboard. I see. What do you guys call yourselves? Uh, G-string orchestra. <laughs> G-string orchestra. That's a. Uh, I think they just made that up on the spot. But that's a that's a creative name because. So while they're getting set up, uh, can uh, you tell us who the members are? Yeah, we're Mars. Mars is the name of the group. Where do I sit? Wherever you want, I can yep. get up if you want to. How are you doing? I'm Ken. Mark. Mark. Okay, now uh, I see an acoustic guitar and a violin as well. And a washed up bass. So? Hey, Carl. How you doing? Hey. Okay. Yeah. And do you guys have your own original music? Watch, watch my kids. Watch my this one's a traditional. Okay, just gonna do a traditional song. Yeah. We'll be playing all day on the streets. Huh? What time are you playing? Uh, and where are you playing at? Gonna play right next to the fuel and right after you're done with this performance. So, okay, go ahead and do a traditional song. Traditional tuning and then traditional song. Get your shot and tap it, it'll pull.
We don't smoke right here. Well, that's it. What's up? Oh, if you want to do another song, you can do another You know, I think we should ask these wonderful people if they would do one more song. Would you be willing? If you guys have, if you have another one, do it. You can do any song here. But uh, uh, try not to do any cover songs, though. I like more popular. I know it is, but you never know. Let's just play one with you. Alright, one more song. Let's five minutes. Yeah. 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 There was so much excitement here that uh, the violinist broke his string. Hey, can you tell us your names before you guys take off? I like it a lot. <laughs> what, what is it? The Loose Marbles. Awesome. Thanks so much for stopping by and playing for us. He keeps making up band names. I don't think that's the real name either, is it? You don't have a name? We don't have a name? We haven't got that far. Well, I think that you've gotten pretty darn far in a week and a half. You just have to come up with a name. Thanks so much for stopping by. Sorry about your violin string breaking. Yeah, that was. I brought uh, my son here to talk on. That was a very authentic jug band sound. Hey, thanks. Always excitement on, in River West. I'm telling you. Always something fun going on. What do you think, Sleepy? Oh yeah, it's awesome. I'm trying to get my son to talk on the mic, but he won't. Well, we're uh, about ready to wrap up our hour. Uh, the Compose Yourself with Julie Brandenburg and today Jacob Mushin. Our other panelists had other obligations today. And uh, we're about ready to turn it over to whoever's ready to take over the next hour. But thanks a lot for everyone who stopped by. Um, if anybody's listening and they have a violin and they have an A string, they could use uh, extra spare strings, anybody? I've just been informed that uh, Eliza Brooks just told me that uh, the violinist is missing an A string. So if, Clobs, if you're listening, or Clobs is not listening. He still needs his own strings anyway. He needs his own strings. So if you are a violinist and you have some spare strings, tragedy has struck. And we really do need some assistance with that. But we're going to wrap up our hour. Thanks again for listening to me, Julie Brandenburg, and Jacob Mushin, and Sleepy's here. And I'm going to turn the microphone over and uh, it's not take even over hour, for a while. It's not I, even your I'll hour. I'll be here to whoever comes. All right, then. Who's scheduled to be next, do you know? I don't know. Well, Sleepy, you want to take over for a while? Yeah, I'll take over. All right, man. We're going to walk around, but we'll stop by and talk to you again. Okay. It's me and you, Junior. Come talk with me. Oh, that's Junior. Tony. That's your son? Yeah, my 14-year-old. Wow. Don't he look like you? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does look like you. He's a very handsome young man. Well, it's nice Thank to meet you. you. Come on, talk with your dad yeah, on this mic. Yeah, okay. So CC and Chris, whenever they show up. Yeah. CC already here somewhere. Yeah, he's just not here, here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just sitting there for a minute, keeping the radio going, you know, Sleepy Show is here, but I didn't, like, really uh, got myself on, but I'm just here for a few minutes, you know, enjoying the Center Street Day thing. It's awesome. Great people. If you like to come, 
Come on, talk on the radio with Sleepy. And I'm trying to get my shorty over here, Junior. Come on over here. Why not? Ain't nobody gonna see you. They're just gonna hear your voice. You know, come on, talk on RiverWestRadios.com. He's a shy little boy, 14 years old, being shy. I don't know, understand that. But I'm glad he don't be out at night past curfew time, you know, because I'll put my foot in this, you know what, if he be out past 10 o'clock, even 9 o'clock to me, he got to be ready for school. How is school? Tell me about school, sir. Good. Huh? Good. I can't hear you. 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 Good. Can't hear you. Good. Can't hear you. Good. Oh, there we go. Yeah, tell me what you do in school. Work. Come on, man. Work. We got just a mic for Yeah, I just found that out. Put your chair up. Pull it up some more. Come on. Yeah, we got a little junior here. Yeah, tell me more about the school now. Good. Come on, man. Good. Pull your seat up more. Don't be scared. Ain't nothing be scared to talk on the radio. So tell me more about school. Do a lot of work. What kind of work? What's your favorite subject? Math. We can't hear you in the mic. You got to speak up. Math. Math? Yeah, cool. You just like your brother, huh? He like math, too. Nah. Yeah. So, um, you, you, you all, uh, you see your, all your brothers, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, tell me, who's, who's your favorite teacher? Well, uh, you don't know yet. I don't know yet. Yeah. You want to come on, join? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, uh, what school you go to? Cass. What? Speak it to the mic, sir. Cass. Cass Street School, huh? Yep. Great school, ain't it? How long you been going to Cass? Since third grade. Since third grade. Yeah, I'm just filling in, trying, you know, keep the radio going. I hope y'all enjoy this. We're we going to call it right now, Sleepy and Junior Show. That's what we're going to do. Call it Sleepy and Junior Show. And that sounds so good. Even though he's just on my show right now, you know, because I would never have him on my show after a certain time. He can, might come on my show on a Thursday. I'm, I might have my kids come on the show on a Thursday. You know, and that's not too late. 7 to 8 p.m., you know, Sleepy Show. Because yeah. Eight o'clock right now is my curfew. What? Eight o'clock for school is my curfew. He said eight o'clock is his curfew on the school night. For sure. You got to talk into the mic, though, for everybody can hear you out there. I'm good. <laughs> no, you ain't good? Come on. Nah. Radio is fun to talk on. You know? Yep. Yeah, y'all can come on in and, and be part of the guests. Y'all want to talk on the mic out there that's peeping in? People peeping in and stuff, they might as well come on out here and, and, and talk on the mic. You guys want to talk on the mic? Well, we got the uh, show at 2. Oh, you got a show at 2? Yeah. Oh, you with CC? Uh-huh. You with CC? Yeah. Okay, I'm just filling in until he could get here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think he's eating or something. Yeah, Center Street, River West is good, man. The best place to live in Milwaukee is River West. I think he went to get something to eat or something. That's what uh, Sob told me. Yeah. Come on, Junior, tell me more about your school and stuff. I'm good. Um, not much. Come on, man. Nothing much. Huh? Nothing much. You got talking to the mic, sir. Don't be scared. My son's scared to talk into the mic. I don't know why. 
But hell uh, yeah. Okay, we got bands playing at um in River West here. We got uh Ways and Means at 115. We got Scrim Shaw at two. Lack of Reason at 245. Floor Model 330. Uh, what's this? That's Cemento or something, Rub, 415. Hearts of Stone at five. Dr. Chow at six. Love made them or something. They'll be, you know, come check these bands out, you know. I guess they, they must be good. I don't...